Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dragon's Creed Gaming. Uh, tonight we'll be playing a new show for you guys. Uh, this is Sins and Consequences, a Blades in the Dark actual play podcast. Uh, before we get into that and before we introduce you to our lovely players, just wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on with the channel. Um, obviously, as you can probably tell, um, this is not Chris. This is actually Aaron. I'll be the GM for this game. We, over at the channel here, we're, um, we're putting out a lot of new content. Um, Chris um, and them will be releasing a game every Friday. Um, as, as usual, they'll be playing Alien, um, the RPG. And we over here will be playing um, Blades in the Dark. Now, if you aren't a member of the Patreon, seriously consider throwing a couple coins into the Dragon's Horde. Uh, because we got some awesome stuff going on over there. Just at the $8 tier, I believe it's the $8 tier, um, we have access to exclusive shows. Uh, they have the Tales of Five Gamers, um, the Warhammer Fantasy um, series. They also had, um, and also um, currently, Adam will be recording a new Shadowrun Anarchy game as well um, with some awesome people. Um, some guests on the Shadowrun Pay Data show, and a couple of other people um, from the Sinless podcast. And um, Ridium will be returning from the... Sorry, Adam, what's the name of his podcast again? Pride Against Prejudice, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. Um, with that being said, um, we'll start by introducing our players for today. So we have a couple of new faces, but we'll start with a returning face here. This is Adam. Um, oh. You might recognize him from the paid, uh, Shadowrun Pay Data podcast. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Adam. I uh, am uh, me. Hi. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. I am super looking forward to playing Blades in the Dark. It's... Uh, uh, a really, really cool system that I have been interested in playing but have not had the opportunity to since I first heard about it. And uh, I got my, my handsome hard copy of the book right here that you guys can't see on my blurry camera. But uh, I am super excited to play this. Can't wait. Let's do some crime. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, um, like I said, we've got a couple new faces. We also have CJ. Um, new face to the show, but I'm excited to play a game with her. So how are you doing, CJ? Oh, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, I decided to. Uh, I sorry. <laughs> Did you guys oh. start yet, to Aaron? Yeah, we're recording right now. <laughs> Wonderful. All dude. right. <laughs> yeah, this That's is live, dude. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. uh, That's what hit me. I got that. Uh, oh, I'm over oh, recording. Uh, blank <laughs> stared the distance. That's okay. <laughs> I may or may not edit this out. Thing. All right. Well, I just wanted to stop and make sure everything was okay before uh, before you guys get started. So <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> while while you're here, um, why don't you tell our listeners anything cool about the pot or about the channel that <laughs> I might have missed? Oh, that's that's why I said. Do you guys normally start at eight? Am I? Am um, I is that why? Yeah, yeah. Like we're we're gonna oh, try okay. to start a little bit earlier, but um, it's really okay. just whenever people show up. We'll All just right. Start. All right. Uh, well, listeners, you you know me. I'm uh, I'm the host, the great unclean one. Uh, most of the time, your GM. But uh, as you can see now, or or hear now, we are expanding and spreading our scaly dragon wings with another show, and there's more to come. So, uh, other than that, uh, yeah, we got tons in store. We got uh, Alien. We got video recordings coming up. And uh, all sorts of good stuff. So, um, and then Scar just joined the wrong channel. He's an idiot. So well, he, won't, uh, he won't even he won't even show up to games he's supposed to be in. And he's you right? know what? Yeah, yeah. I, I think everyone just wants to play Blades in the Dark. That's that's all that's uh, happening. I'm not awesome. surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> all right. Well, I got to finish getting uh, the OBS thing set up. So you guys have fun, listeners. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Yeah. No worries. See you, Chris. Bye. 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 All right, CJ. I don't know where right. we left off. Right over <laughs> on the top. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I am CJ. Oh. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've read a little bit through this uh, game. Looks like there's supposed not to be as much focus on dice rolling, which is good for me because RNG gods <laughs> hate me. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, 
no, that's that's awesome. This game is really built upon failing forward, so even bad dice rolls are still good for the story, good for your character, um, unless they kill you. It builds character. Um, <laughs> it builds character, that's right. Drop some uh, dirt on it. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we have a personal buddy of mine. Uh, we grew up together, and now we're playing games together for the first time, actually. Um, oh. This is my friend, Ethan. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so this is my first tabletop experience going through, so very green as far as those roots, but uh, when it comes into the rest of geek culture, tech games, all that type of stuff, I'm all over the place. Um, and... Yeah, a uh, fun fact about me since I'm new is uh, last week I almost saw my first dolphin. So I still have not yet seen one, but I figured that was, I'm, I'm on my way to development there. Man, that, that's a week. Uh, last week I mean? almost saw a dolphin. <laughs> Did someone else see a dolphin in your vicinity? Like, how does that work? It was exactly that. It was, we went out, we went looking for dolphins and someone else saw it and I didn't. So it was just a, an attempt was oh. made. That's amazing. Uh, all right, guys. And of course, um, you, um, again, my name is Aaron, also known as Poultry Geist. Um, I am the GM for this game, so I'll be playing everybody. These people aren't. And also probably some things like some inanimate objects and what have you, uh, as GMs are off to do. Um, before we get too far into it, uh, let me just talk a little bit about Blades in the Dark. Um, Blades in the Dark is a system published by Evil Hat Production in 2017, written by John Harper and a whole bunch of other people, I'm sure. Um, in this game, you will play the role of daring scoundrels who build a criminal enterprise in the haunted and bloody streets of Duskwall, also known as Duskwall, Northwall, or North Hook, and I will use those terms interchangeably. Um... It, to describe a little bit about the setting, imagine life in the 1870s. Industrial Revolution abound. The cobblestone streets of London, England meet the, the canals and the gondoliers of Venice, Italy. Uh, the printing press is new, and ethics about whether or not um, non-noble people and non-aristocrats should be able to read um, abound. The telegraph is simply a novelty for the rich and wealthy. Um, here, these new technologies are created and powered by the blood of Leviathan demons that roam the seas. Um, for a little bit of history here, um, 1,000 years ago, uh, the world ended, and it was plunged into eternal darkness. The veils between life and death have ended. Um, spirits, uh, both feral, um, um, feral spirits roam the world, attempting to suck the life force out of you in order to sustain their undeath, um, as well as um, things that we call demons, which are just simply entities that cannot be explained by physics, um, exist and are probably trying to hurt you in some way, shape, or form. Um, they all live outside the city of Duskfall, which is surrounded by what we call a lightning barrier, which manages to keep the majority of these threats at bay. Um, yeah, we'll get more into what the system is like and what the world is like as we kind of start to play. Um, any questions you guys have, of course, we can get through. Um, but that's just kind of a general idea. We're, 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 we're kind of steampunk meets a little bit of horror. Um, there's, a, there's options for political intrigue. Um, we also um, have options for rebellion and redemption. And um, this game will get a little bit dark, so both for the players and for the um, audience at home, um, be prepared for it to get maybe a little bit spooky, get prepared for it to get a little bit bloody. Um, this is definitely uh, not a show intended for children. Um, with that being said, um, let's make our scoundrels. Um, so we're going to start the process of character creation. This is our first session together. This is our session zero. And so I'm going to throw it to the group here. Anybody have a character concept in mind that they want to play as? Oh my God. I want to play like, so there's a bunch of different, I, I don't know. You call them classes in this system? Um, uh, playbooks actually. Playbooks. There's a, like all of the playbooks, every single one of them sounds awesome. Uh, I... I, I don't know. I can't pick. Uh, I'm going to make somebody else pick before me because I 
I, I, I want to I want to do it all, man. These are all awesome. Every single one's awesome. No worries. Um, actually, guys, it, just so that you know, on Foundry, uh, this is for the players. Um, it, if you want to edit your sheet, um, you can. You just have to click that lock on the top right hand corner. That'll be allow you to to type things in. Um, otherwise, it's gonna lock it, and you can't uh, make edits. Um, cool, cool. Just before that question gets asked. Um, it looks like Ethan has already made some changes to his character sheet, so why don't we talk about that, Ethan? Sure, yeah, so I kicked off, and I, I looked at the uh, the different sheets, and I figured that um, I like the sound of the spider, and so um, really it was just kind of looking at the different special abilities that they have, and um, really the, the one for foresight really just kind of stuck out. I like the idea of um, being able to go in and manipulate the amount of stress that it's going on during a score. And so just this whole idea of being able to um, kind of deny what I expect you'll be doing as a GM of going, oh, and, and now it sucks a little more and be like, well, it's not Actually, that bad right now. One of my favorite parts about um, uh, about Blades in the Dark is everything that bad that happens to you is completely your own fault. I don't roll <laughs> a single dice. I'm going to apologize to everyone ahead of time because, man, I am going to throw every wrench that I own into all of the works. Uh, no, honestly, you need to. And I got a lot of wrenches. <laughs> all right, guys. So um, Ethan has done the first step of character creation, which is, of course, to choose a playbook um, just to kind of outline what your options are for um, for those that for you guys and for the people at home. Um, we have a cutter. Um, cutters are kind of exactly what they sound like. Cutters are good at winning fights with violence and with intimidation. Play a cutter if you want to get your way. Um, next, we have the hound. Hounds are good at tracking things down and also long distance combat. Play a hound if you want to ch choose your battles. Uh, I'm not going to read them verbatim every time. Leech, uh, they're kind of like scientists, crafters, physicers. Physicer being another word for doctor. Um, they're kind of people who uh, focus in on um, fighting the world with what they can build and working with their mind that way. Um, they also make excellent saboteurs and bomb makers. Um, Lurk is kind of um, a stand-in for rogue. Um, sneaky guys who like to stabby stab in the dark. Uh, we have the slide. That's kind of a charismatic, charming person um, who may approach things in a different, less violent way. Um, like Ethan said, uh, we have the spider. Uh, they're kind of like a mastermind archetype. Um, and they kind of control things from behind the shadows, puppet masters, things like that. And last but not least, we got the Whisper. Whispers are good at magic stuff and dealing with ghosts. Um, if you want to be able to cast magic, you, you, you might want to choose a Whisper. That being said, as we will go through and we gain experience and level up, you guys have the option of picking, um, not, at, not now at character creation, but in the future, picking special abilities um, from other playbooks that that's oh, called cool. the veteran um, so so you can really build a character any way and also even if you end up playing the same playbook two characters from the same playbook can play completely differently and so you don't want to think too hard about um, what other people are doing really just focus in on what you want to do because I guarantee you no two characters are the same in Blades in the Dark um, but that being said, um, CJ, have you had anything in, in mind for your playbook? Well, I was between two characters, but since Ethan likes Spider, that will take out that other character. So the one I was thinking of would be either between a Leech or a Whisper, because I like the idea of a, of a character who's built, who's more obsessed with making like holes and stuff. Like that whole who's like really into oh. building and tinkering. Okay. But I also really like how Whisper, like a lot of the Whisper's abilities and their starting items. So I was kind of between. I absolutely. Like, I will emotionally say... in the world, I like Leech, but gameplay wise, I like Whisper because Mama likes magic. <laughs> I, there we go. I, I, uh, I agree. CJ, uh, <laughs> out, of them, out of all of them, I'm like, those are the two coolest ones. So. Whichever one you're not going to do, I'm going to do the other one. Right. <clears throat> um, and also, CJ, there's nothing to say that you can't put points into Tinker as a Whisper. That's yeah. the other thing. At character creation, you get four pips. I think it's four uh, that mm -hmm. you can put into any skill you want. 
So it starts off with like a couple pips already laid out for you. You get more. So okay. um, like I'll say this, like when I played this with my wife, she played a whisper and then put as many points as she could into skirmish so that oh, she so could like- they're stabbing people. Exactly. Punch so she's a, a, Yeah, and she took, I think there's an ability that whispers have that allowed them to travel through the ghost field, like kind of like uh, Nightcrawler. Oh yeah, um, that's she took fucking that. awesome. Yeah, so she combined those two things and made like a very different kind of fighter than a cutter, but she was still as good as a cutter at fighting in some ways. Oh, that's so so cool. yeah, um, feel free to get creative with um, with your playbook. And again, as we gain experience, also if you hate your character, just kill them. Uh, like to just let them die. <laughs> Dude, um, just kill them. Just kill them. Just jump off. Or don't, something. Get, don't get. Too, don't <laughs> like. I'm gonna make you care about your characters, but don't get too precious because they might actually find themselves in positions where they can't make a session. Um, I'm gonna get. We'll, I'm we'll gonna get, get all there. all mazes and monsters on this and go into a fugue state if my character dies. There you go. Just um, warning so, you. It'll be your fault. So yeah, um, <laughs> CJ, if you have something in mind, uh, feel free to to throw it out there. Otherwise. Um, we can kind of talk out some stuff and, and go through the next steps with Ethan here, who seems to be ready. But what do you think? CJ, do you here? have a preference between the two? Um. Or do you want to roll? You want to roll some dice? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, when I was looking like through the the whispers, like the whisper stuff sounds like more cool to play and stuff, and all their the their starting stuff, I liked that better. So like. Maybe whisper and throw some stuff into Tinker. Absolutely, why not? Um, that that sounds like a perfectly acceptable way to play the character. I found um, like the bottom three options of like how you gain XP to be one of the biggest kind of draws to each of the characters, as far as like, because like that's like how do you do yeah. better? How do you grow as this person? And it's like, well, are you doing this type of action or that type of action? And then that was kind of the a, a nice way of differentiating between the different builds. Yeah, and that's actually a good point. Um, this game rewards you for good RP. Um, um, and that 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 does mean that things like your heritage, your vices, um, just arbitrary decisions about what you think your character would believe in, um, those things like will actually gain you XP. Um, and so it, it's one of those things where really like it encourages you to love your character and to love showing off what your character thinks and how they act. Um, it's one of my favorite parts about the system. But, oh, okay. so how CJ, I, you're thinking. How do I... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, how do I pick my uh, my playbook? Okay, so if you go to the uh, above the chat log, all the way to the right, um, you go you uh, where the companion packs are, right beside the the game settings. Um, there's a whole bunch ah. of lists there. Click classes, and then you just drag that onto your character sheet. Awesome. And, and it and it'll populate all the stuff you need there. There it goes. Look at that. I've chosen Lurk. Yeah. Not one of the things that I said. I changed my mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we got a Lurk. Oh yeah, dude. So let's get lurk. let's get lurk. creepy. And uh and CJ, you're thinking Whisper stuff? Um well now that you said that about the whole like how you gain XP and how you would play the character, Leech sounds closer to how I'd end up playing the character. Yeah. Um Absolutely. And again, um, it's one of those things where like, it won't take long probably for you to kind of get, like, especially if you really want to want to do it, um, that we can get into how it works, but you can do training to level up faster, um, than even other players. Um, and so, um, you can just then pick like whisper things probably before even like four or five sessions in. Um, so, like, your character will grow pretty quickly overall. Okay. Yeah. Um, worst case scenario is you can overindulge your vice, and then you can do both. You can have a whisper, too. Um, Ooh, I plan to do that a lot. Let's well, overindulge. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I well, just went to... There's a place out by me called Sushi Station. It's one of those sushi places where they got the conveyor belt. And like all the sushi comes through on little domes, and like man, did I indulge in some sushi? Woo! All right. I mean, I fucking love sushi. Um, oh my god, I've been eating eel like crazy lately. Dude, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Unagi. 
All right. We should probably play Blades in the Dark, though. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to so, keep doing it. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. Did you get the things to drag onto the sheet? Uh, so if you go to the compendium, um, compendium. I'm, um, which is um, above the chat log, all the way to the yeah. right beside the settings, um, click classes. Yeah, I see. And then you gotta just, make sure your character sheet's unlocked too. Yeah. Uh, so there's a little green lock at the top right of the character sheet. Just click that, and it should unlock. And then you can make changes. And that's just so that stuff doesn't accidentally get changed. And because I didn't program this. Because, but yeah, um, you got that, CJ? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, you might as well leave it unlocked while we're doing this. Um, the next step, it says to choose a heritage. Your character's heritage describes where their family line is from. Um, you can pick whichever one you like. Um, if you are a foreigner, you have immigrated to Duskfall. Um, oh, no, you decide if, you're, if you've immigrated recently to Duskfall or if you're a local who grew up there. Um, Duskfall itself is a city that is very diverse. It's one of the most diverse cities in the Shattered Isles, which is the name of the overarching world. That you guys live in um yeah so you guys um i don't know if you've had a chance to read a little bit about they have a very short blurb about each one but um this con the the country that you guys are in right now is called akaros duskfall is not the capital of akaros but it is the largest city in akaros um it is also the home of the imperium um which is the immortal emperor um which is a, a character that exists in this world um, has okay. has strived to unify all of the other nations except for Tychoros um, through warfare and bargaining, um, and so he has been alive since the cat since before the Cataclysm, um, and has basically gone on the rampage to unite the world and make sure that everyone is using lightning barriers as much as possible. Um, and so yeah, Akaros is is. The, is kind of where that's from. And, and Akaros is kind of situated to be kind of more or less like Europe, um, specifically Western Europe. Um, it's, um, it, 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 it's a culture that kind of thrives on scientific... Um, um, what's the word? Uh, you know, scientific discovery, and um, they tend to not um, engage with... Um, spirits as um, deeply or or the occult as much as other um, nations might um, specifically because it's against the law um, in the Imperium to um, practice like things like witchcraft and stuff like that um, spirits are just illegal in Akros um, there's also the Dagger Isles uh, these are kind of seafaring peninsula people think um, it's um, is it the Ironborn from uh, Game of Thrones yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, they're the only nation that does not use lightning barriers. Um, it's kind of a mystery as to how they do it. Um, if they're someone they're does just raw some... dog in the demons. Yeah, actually, so um, the um, Evil Hat Productions just released a supplement for this game that takes Ooh. place in the Dagger Isles instead of in Akaros, and so there is an actual answer to that, and I know it, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, all right. <laughs> I'll put um, that book on the wish list. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. There was also Aruvnia, which is um, it's like a large kind of desert area. Um, in the in in the book, it kind of describes it as being like Egypt. Um, I would say that that's more or less true. But they also have more agriculture and food production than anywhere else in the sit in the world. Um, they also have the largest artificial sun in the world. Um, good time to point out that nobody. None of your characters have ever seen the sun for more than five minutes, um, because okay. there's only two times a day that the sun um, rises and sets, and it's about two and a half minutes at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. So, um, like, it does it. It does it twice a day. Um, you, it's like a sliver of like the shattered sun um, will shine briefly for like two and a half minutes at the start of the day and at the end of the day. And whether that's actually the beginning and end of a day or not, um, that's just how time is told now. Okay, but that's how the, like, yeah, so, you know, uh, one day in my mind is it comes up and that's the beginning of the day and it goes down and then it comes up and that's the end of the day and it goes down. 
Um, so you see like a like a light to the east, or mm. yeah, you see a light to the east in the morning, um, and then it goes right back to basically night for uh, twelve hours, and then there's a, a light to the west for about two minutes. Um, but in Aruvnia, they have a gargantuan artificial sun, and so their capital city is constantly bathed in light, and it's always daytime there. Do those um, guys get attacked by demons? Um, oddly enough, they don't. Okay. Um, and again, if you play a okay. character from Rufnia, um, actually, I'll just tell you, because it's not really a secret. It's an open secret with the Rufnia. In my version of this world, um, the, the previous king, before they were absorbed by the emperor, made a deal with a significantly powerful forgotten god slash demon. Okay. And the entire nation is that creature. And so when oh. you walk around in Aruvnia, occasionally like stones and and like and buildings will like to like grow eyes and look at you. Um, Past. I'm not from there. <laughs> um, but also Aruvnia is well known for their sword arts. Um, they also have an excellent art scene. Um, it is it is like a very it's probably one of the most rich cultures in the world, and there's a lot of money in Aruvia. Or, yeah, Aruvia. Uh, the next nation is Severos. Severos is kind of like the Dothraki from Game of Thrones, in some ways. They're they're kind of like um, horse-riding ghost hunters. Um, they, they, they have cities. They have cities, and they are not like barbaric people or anything like that, but they, um, they practice a lot of old traditions um, that involve spirits, and they they generally have a more positive outlook on the on the spirits than other people. But they will still hunt ghosts, and they actually power their a lot of their electric electrical goods by hunting spirits and forcing them inside of them. <laughs> um, the next nation is Scovlin. Uh, Scovlin, um, within the last five years, was finally subjugated by the Imperium. So they were the last nation to hold out. Um, there are, it is a nation that has been torn apart by war um, be because they've been at war for like 35 years with the, with the rest of the Imperium. Um, a lot of the people there, they are very proud people. Um, they have a very rich culture um, and they would kind of be like Eastern Europe um, and Russia. Like that's kind of what the idea is. Um, and yeah, the, they, they, yeah, it was a 36 year, um, war with the Imperium called the Unity War, which only ended a few years ago. Um, many Skolander refugees who lost their homes and jobs in the destruction of the war have come to Duskfall seeking new opportunities. Um, and so there is a, an, a, a in the Char Hollow district, I believe, um, is a very large Skolandy refugee camp. Um, and so it, it's just something that's there. Um, I will never like express like any kind of even fake racism towards you guys. They're not like necessarily marginalized people in that sense. Um, it's just that during the process of the war, they kind of lost everything. Um, and then the last nation is if you want to be weird as hell, you can be from Tycharos. Far, far to the north, there is a semi-mythical place far away. Um, and it's beyond the Void Sea. Everyone that is from there is has a demonic taint to them, um, which can be anything you want. Um, but a lot of them have things like translucent skin, so you can just they just walk around and you can see their veins um, oh. and their bones and stuff. Um, they have skin That's made cool. out of like like bark that just constantly flakes off like ash. They have giant horns. They have red eyes, like whatever you want. And it can be as extreme or as mild as you want, but you do have a very obvious taint um, that people <laughs> will recognize immediately that you are from Tycharos because you look like you're part demon. Um, when you said demonic taint, that conjured a very specific image in my mind. Um, it doesn't have to be on your taint, but it can be. Okay. All right. I was, thinking, I was thinking like a, like, you know, like a demonic taint, but uh, all right. Um, yeah, man. Maybe um, maybe I'll be one of these weird guys. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with CJ. CJ, any of those like kind of ring out as something that you like or 
feel like strikes a chord uh, with you? I was gonna go with Akaros. That makes sense as a tinkerer. Uh, they would actually be the best tinkerers in the world. And it's also where most people who do spark craft, which is like the electrical work, um, anything like kind of the steampunk stuff is called spark craft. That's yeah. where it originated from. They have a few universities and stuff like that there. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ethan? Um, so I'm thinking within Akros itself, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the map to kind of take a more detailed approach. And um, I was thinking I would throw my origins into the Imperial city, knowing that like the, the Imperials are very much this kind of big dominating type force within Dustfall. I'm assuming yeah. that the Imperial army is stems from the Imperial city. Yes, they do. And actually, so Dustfall is a member of Akros, but they are a separate faction from the city council of Dustfall. And it's well known that Dustfall is actively trying to separate from the Imperial and has been for like several decades. So they're Quebec. Yeah. Yeah. Or Texas. So Quebec or Texas, take your choice. Okay. Hey, same um, thing. Tomato, tomato, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we got two people from Akaros, which is totally fine. Um, and also two different parts of Akaros, I'm assuming. Um, now we've got Adam. Adam, where do you think oh, you want to be? Oh, man, so I already, I already put Akaros onto my character sheet, but now I'm thinking about being a weird demon guy. I mean, oh. go ahead and do it. I'll, 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 I'll lure you. There is secret lore that only you will get to know about being from <laughs> yeah, Akaros. Dude, come on, of course. Here we go. That's the one. What kind I'll of effect you about... would you like? Would you want to have on yourself? Of like, like what? What is the tainting on on yeah. you that is like drawing you to saying, "Hmm, maybe I want to be Tigros." Oh man, I don't know. Like, there's there, I can basically make up whatever the hell I want. Is that right? Yes. The only thing I'll say is, is kind of like in Shadowrun, um, if you pick the the obvious like like our recognizable negative quality. You, you you can't really hide it unless you go sure. unless you make active efforts to do so. So it should be obvious, um, unless you're actively finding a way to hide it. Okay. Um, you have like ooh, see through yeah. eyes I don't know. or something. I don't know. No, something like it's it's gonna be something like weird. Uh, you know what? None of you guys know yet. Whoa! It'll come up. It'll come up later when I when I think. Okay. I I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Um, I'm also totally fine, by the way, with any background you guys want. If you want to say that you were a prince, that's fine. It's just not going to help you in any way. <laughs> um, okay. Um, okay. Because uh, next we're going to background. Uh, character background describes what they did before they joined the crew. And um, I'll just uh, spoil something here. You guys are actually starting in prison. Um, and this is going to be kind of like our first score is going to take place before you guys officially became a crew. Um, and I'll explain more about what that means and stuff um, when we get there. But, um, yeah, like this can either be, you could have been a criminal, and there's an option for the backgrounds that relates to that. But you might have been an academic, a noble, a military member, um, a tradesperson, um, a lawyer, or a blue coat, or... Um, or an inspector even, um, a laborer, or um, actually, no, that's all of them. It could be, you could be an academic as well. <laughs> I gotta go under um, one. Okay. Um, do you have an idea of like what kind of underworld? Like, like you're a lurk, so maybe streets. you were. He, he yeah. grew up on the streets. You know, I got, I got lurk. He's, uh, uh, you know, he's a weird demon guy that grew up on the streets, dusk uh, of the hook, he calls it the hook. He's a hooker. Hooker by trade, oh. hooker by choice. Um, he, hooker for he may life. even call oh, no, he's... it the dust. That's uh, oh, a shit. term that people use when they live in the shadows of Dust Bowl. They call. Ooh, it yeah, dude. He's he's like some kind of shadowy runner type. No, uh, so he's uh, no, he grew up on the streets. You know, he's he's a weirdo, and you know, he got a nobody likes him. Nobody, uh, you know, he's 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 pushed to the margin, so he's got to do what he needs to to survive. That's the underworld okay. thing. Okay, I like it. Um, well, there's this is background details. Do I have to? What do I put in there? Um, anything you want. In fact, you kind of oh. already did it. Um, okay. You, you're, you're a street urchin of sorts. Yeah. Maybe a petty cool. thief. I'm gonna what put street you, kid. CJ? 
So I'm between two now that I, I thought of it. I was originally gonna go academic and say that she, uh, that she was like, got kicked out because she, if since you said that the whole, since spirits or whatever are illegal in the imperial place, that like she was searching to researching the spirits too much, and got kicked out. Or it was military as a way to get access to being to tech, like maintaining the weapon stuff, and then okay, it's a little honorable discharge, not dishonorable discharge, and that could be how she ends up in prison. <laughs> there or I, I, I like, like the first one. I like the first one. It reminds me of the fucking of uh, Reanimator. I will say, as an academic you would have more opportunities like i'll i'll kind of show uh, like i'll i'll reveal a little bit behind the curtain here um your background will will impact who you guys have access to in terms of people that might be trying to fuck with you but people whom you may know from your past that are trying to help you mm -hmm. um that's the number one way they'll come up um is i will use it both against you and for you um and it's just kind of a prompt for you guys to be like, I know a guy. It's this professor that I used to have that really liked me. Or I know a guy. I actually know the guy who's the captain of the Imperial military in Duskfall. Um, so like you can, you can like, so that, that kind of is how that'll work. But um, yeah, Charter Hall is a very rich area and that would probably be where you studied. Um, unless you think that your character was like super wealthy, in which case um, you would have gone to Duskball Academy and White Crown. Mm. Um, we'll go academic. Okay. Okay. Yeah, academic. Um, I will uh, make sure that I have some information for you by next session about Charter Hall University in case you want to use it or know anything about it. Um, and I'll just drop it in the journal um, there for you. Uh, so you can kind of look at it. Okay. Yep. Um, and then last but not least, we got Ethan. Cool. Yeah. So I was figuring um, my background is going to be in the trades. You kind of talked about being in jail. And so I figured, hey, um, my character is someone who was trying to move up as far as the, the company was working in, in shipping, handling the books. And then... Uh, wouldn't you know it, suddenly all the blame kind of landed on them and they find themselves uh, in jail and not really f feeling very loyal to that company anymore. So that all kind of magically just happened when you started to talk about what the scenario is. So I'm very happy yeah, with that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what what trade did you have? Like, or, or what trade were you thinking that you had? Like, were so, you like an accountant? Um... Yeah, I was thinking, I'm like, I was saying shipping and books. Um, I, I think uh, logistics. And so. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like, like um, handling. Yeah, pretty close. So. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you just because it can get a little complicated. Um, I forget if it's Charles. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm. Oh, Coleridge is what it's called. Um, so in Coleridge, there's a mine. There's also something called the Ironworks. Um, it is a large, like, factory that's owned by one of the city council members. Um, and they are notoriously poor. Like, they, they have notoriously poor working conditions at the Ironworks. Um, the, the foremen are crooked as hell um, and are always taking off the top. That would be, like, a good place, like, to kind of put you if you're open to that. The other option is, is like, you could actually bid a railjack. Uh, which means that you worked on trains or you were like a, like like responsible for maybe doing the scheduling of the trains and stuff like that just yeah, as sure. a couple ideas like yeah, you, yeah, like, yeah. No, like keep that. it in your head and, and balance it around so like whatever you think now each of you get uh, to assign four action dots and i will just say that um they say it suggest in the book and i suggest as as the gm um one of the dots should be in an action that you feel reflects your character's heritage. So if you're from Akaros, like a couple of you are, that might be tinkering, that might be study, that might be kind of like something a little bit more academic that reflects 
what it's like to be in Akros. Um, whereas, like, if you were from, let's say, Scovland, it might be skirmish, just because it's a little bit like they were at war very recently. You were probably a soldier. Um, then one dot in an action that you feel reflects your character's background, and then two anywhere you want. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I'll give you guys a second with that. And while we're at it, um, you can choose a special ability as well, um, based on your playbook. And, um, the first one that's ready, uh, just shout out what you think you're putting your pips and stuff in. Also, if you have any questions, let me know. I should stay as well. Okay, so I'm going to put one into a tune, because my guy's weird and he deals with weird stuff from his uh, his heritage, right? Um, yeah. He's got weird demon-y connections, so I guess a tune would be the right thing for that. Uh, I got uh, study for being... Uh, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not from here. That's right. Get rid of that study. I don't need that. That doesn't make sense. He's got a tune from being a weirdo. I got, uh, let's see, three more. One of them, you said uh, one from that, one from my background. Mm -hmm. My uh, yeah. background, I would probably put... Um, what's, what's, uh, so what's also, I should say, you cannot put more than three pips into any one skill at character creation. Like so you total. can't max out total. Okay. So you can't have four of any skill. Um, though, if you pick a crew, you can. Like, if you pick a certain crew upgrade, you can. But Okay. So let's see, I'm going to go attune, I'm going to go finesse, uh, so he can, you know, uh, pick pockets and stuff. That's how he makes his, his living. And yep. uh, two more, let's see, I got, uh, well, skirmish a little bit, you know, he's, he's been in a fight or two. And um, also, if you have any bit. questions about what the skills kind of are, um, we can get into that. But if you hover your mouse over them, it will explain what they are. Kind it's a of. pretty solid description that pops up. So yeah, I got I got yeah. a tune, finesse, skirmish, and survey. All right, that's a good mix of things. Um, another thing to keep in mind, um, you'll see how there's like um for each of the skills there's like a circle and then a line. Yes. Um, any any skill that has um at least one pip in it will add to your total um insight prowess or resolve um which are what you use to roll to resist things like resist consequences Ooh. okay um and it's also what you use to not overindulge in your vice or to overindulge in your vice um, when you indulge in your vice you always roll your lowest one um but don't mark them off on there because that's actually um experience for that okay so, so um, undo the thing i just did got it Yes, sorry, I was looking at... I'm looking at Adam's character sheet. So oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my, um, how did you know? Um, Get those out. But yeah, so um, Adam has one insight skill, which is survey. So whenever he makes an insight roll, he'll roll one die. And he has one in a tune, which is a resolve skill. So when he has to make a resolve roll, he'll roll one die. But he has three separate skills in prowess, which means that he can roll three dice when he has to make a prowess resistance roll. Um, but you'll never use prowess to resist vice because it's your highest one. Okay. Okay. Um, I chose my vice already too. Yes, I saw that. We'll get to that soon. Yeah. Um, and then you said pick a special th ability. Yeah, yeah. We'll get okay, back. I'll to read through those. I'll abilities. read through those. Yeah. Yeah. And so for you... marking down the pips, um, you go wide as far as being able to like do those three categories, and then do you go tall when it's like you know if I want to. Um, I'd like to have like you know maybe three pips on co consort so that like you know if I do that as an action I have more ability to do that and that's kind of the, the difference yeah. between the two. So we can explain actually how this works. So if you wanted to consort, which is kind of like the party role, um, is kind of the the quickest way to say it. If you want to convince someone to get drunk with you, you would consort. Um, it, um, but. There's other things it's good for. It's it's also good for like social etiquette and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so you you right now, Ethan, I'm looking at your sheet. You have two pips, which I think your character starts with two in there. Yeah, if you want to so... have a third, uh, you would just you would add to the right of it. So, mm -hmm. um, consort. So you would have you have two in consort, 
and one in command, which gives you a total of two points in resolve. Okay, like I know that's. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And and so we had four. It was um, one for background. So I ended up putting mm -hmm. surveyor for that one. Um, okay. You had one for um, it was the character itself, right? Uh, the heritage, your heritage. Oh, the heritage. Um, and then two that reflect just whatever you think your character. Needs. Okay. Yeah. So I put command based off of the trades. Um, I put survey. Wait. Dissipate. Oh, Sur comes. Survey or study. Um, both of them are good for acros. And to be honest, it can be anything you want. It's just kind of to get you thinking about your character and what they're like. More than me trying to. I'm not gonna say no if you put us pip somewhere. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um. Yeah. And then I have to. I have to think where these other two will go. Maybe you can pop over to CJ. Yeah, no worries. CJ. Hey. Uh, I've got two that I'm sure that I'm going to put at least one Pippin study and one in a two. Absolutely, kind of yeah. And then, um, yeah, you should have two more, I think, right? Because... Uh, I'm wondering, wondering about doubling you... down, but... Yeah, actually, and, and stacking skills is not a bad thing. Um, the way rolls work in this game is um, the amount of pips that you have is your dice pool. And so we roll as many dice as you have in that skill. So if it's a tinker roll, you have two right now, you would roll two dice and take the higher of the two results. And then that would determine whether you succeed, succeed with a consequence or fail with a consequence. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, like, so like, having a lot of dice in something will mean you more likely to succeed. Also, you have to have at least two pips in something, or at least be rolling at least two dice to crit. If you only have one dice or you have a zero in a skill that you roll, you cannot crit. And you want to, critical successes are, are awesome in this game. So, yeah. And, and yeah, if you're, if you're kind of still thinking it over, that's not a problem. Um, we'll maybe move. Well, actually, Adam disappeared. He's he's made like a ghost. He's got the spirit of the game down. Yeah. So uh, over on my side, um, I ended up kind of going for prowess. Um, I figured kind of going in. Um, and I don't know. Really, just wanted to have a bit of a balanced character going in to kind of have them start off as a bit of a blank slate to see how I want to kind of draw on them. So I figured Prowl and Skirmish, as far as like when they get into Tuffles, you know, that's how they approach it. Um, and then, yeah, one into Command, more kind of based on the job, and then Study and Survey also. So very much just trying to go for um, a, a beat down kind of office worker type person turned criminal. I love it. And what about your special ability? I, I, you said already that you picked out Foresight. Um, yeah, well, read that. And um, I know you already kind of said why, but um, yeah, always sure. keep so, in mind about how it works too, because it can work differently for every character, even if it's the same ability. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I went with the special ability of Foresight, which gives me two times per score. Um, I can assist a teammate without paying stress. Uh, and then I just have to tell us, um, tell everyone how we ended up preparing for this. So it's one of those um, being able to kind of basically travel through time um, and talk about how you made something not happen. And so you really just have to kind of go in and come up with a reason that is realistic and doesn't actually break any logic or rules. And so it's kind of being able to come in and go, um, actually, before we had this fight, um, I, I went in and went, hey, you might want to be a little extra prepared, but let me grab a piece of gear for you. I can put it onto my load because I had maybe one extra spare. And right before this happened, I gave that to you. So maybe you didn't quite get as hurt as possible, I think. I think that's my understanding well, of how that rolled. Well, works. so assist, uh, an assist roll, normally you would take two stress um, to assist another character. You give them an extra die or you increase the effect of what they're doing. The, the I um because what you're describing is a mechanic as well it's called a flashback um and that's something because this game kind of works like a heist movie where it's like every time you think that they're in trouble 
Oh, well, no, we actually already thought of that. It's like Ocean's 11 or Ocean's 12 that way. Like, like we already thought of that, and like here's how it happens. Um, and that's a mechanic that anyone can do in the game. But with, what your foresight does is it's kind of like um, you you somehow scoped out beforehand that the enemy had a, a special kind of gun and you um, you managed to like um, find a way around their armor or something because you already knew about it. Um, it can play out any way you want, um, but it's um, you are helping your teammate um, do better, basically. Um, either more likely to succeed or when they do succeed, it's going to be more devastating against the enemy. So that's okay. kind of what assist does. Yeah, so I kind of get to go in and say, here's how I bend the truth, and then I can throw another die in and not pay a stress token. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And what about you, CJ? Did you pick a special ability? I haven't actually looked at your sheet. Um, I was leaning towards Ghost Ward. I also saw there's veterans. You can shoot another source, but if I have to stick with Leech, then I was leaning towards Ghost Ward. Oh. Nice. You know how to wreck yeah. an area with arcane substances and make either an anthema or entice. That's actually really cool. Um, and so it's anathema means that spirits will avoid it at all costs. Um, for me, because I just learned that word yesterday. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, unfortunately, you can't pick the veteran ability until you level up your um, your playbook. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but you can totally do that. Um, pretty quickly again um, as we play the game um, how you level up you'll see how quick it happens and hopefully it'll be quick enough that we can get some really exciting characters going soon um, and I see that you have put again two of your abilities but you you can take your time oh, 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 and pick the other two don't worry about it um, and Adam I haven't looked at yours so you threw your pips out what's your special ability Dude, Ghost Veil sounds so cool. Uh, so it says, you may shift partially into the ghost field, becoming shadowy and insubstantial for a few moments. Take two stress when you shift, plus one stress for each extra feature. And these are the features that I can choose as extra. It says it lasts for a few minutes rather than moments. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between a minute and a moment is, but uh, that might be helpful. Uh, it says, you are invisible rather than shadowy, which is probably going to happen pretty frequently. And it says, I may float through the air like a ghost. All of this yes. stuff sounds super cool. I don't know what stress does, but I'm going to really be stressed out. This guy's going to be uh, very <laughs> stressed out all the time. I will explain what stress is right now, actually. So stress is your health uh, more so than your health is. So oh, you great. can get, you can take harm <laughs> um, and get... Um, like, I can attack you with a sword, and you take a harm, like a level one or two harm um, okay. that says you got stabbed in the arm. Um, and that'll impact rolls and stuff like that. But stress is a resource for you to spend. Um, and when it maxes out, you have to leave the score, and you receive a trauma. <laughs> okay. So it's, um, I love this. I love this idea, and this character is taking form in my mind now. I love this. Yes. Yeah, and so the idea is, it's like, it, like you have become so overwhelmed that like you are no longer part of the score. You don't die, but you do take a trauma, and there's a bunch of um, them listed. Like you can become cold, um, or like um, um, you can become soft. Like so, you care about people too much, or you don't care about people at all. You can become like reckless or angry. Like you get to pick what it is and how it plays out, but. Um, Ultimately, if you take four traumas, your character retires, um, and you cannot play as them anymore. I'm gonna. Um, that's gonna happen to this character. I'll tell you that now. He's he's gonna be so so high strung and stressed out, and he's gonna be like, "Fuck it, I'm leaving. I'm fucking leaving." And he's gonna be gone. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> awesome. That's what this game does to you, and and that's oh, what I mean when I say that that the punishments in this game are entirely your fault because I can't leverage stress against you. You choose to spend it. Oh, dude, I'm, I, I'm consider it spent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's that's important to know. Is like I, as a consequence, will never say you take two stress or something like that. Um, stress is is entirely on you to spend or not spend. Okay. Um, yeah. 
Um, yes. Yeah, so we got our special abilities. All right, the next thing we get to do is each of you on your character sheets have a different list of shady friends. That's on the right-hand side, just a little bit below where the items are. Um, you get to pick one friend and one rival. So um, we don't know who these people are. We're going to figure that out together. It's going to be a little improv exercise. Um, when when we go to first meet them, I'm going to ask you some questions about who you think they are, and I'm going to put throw in a couple things about what I think they are, and we're just going to go from there. Um, but um, I'm looking at um, Adam's sheet right now, so... Um, you can, you if you click on it, it'll give you a little a green arrow for, I'm guessing, your buddy. And if you click it again, yeah. it turns into a little red down arrow for your rival type person. Yes. If you click it again, it goes back to nothing. So uh, I've got uh, uh, my down arrow is definitely good. blue coats are the cops, right? That's the fuzz, the 5-0. Yeah. The they're, the, they're the people who will beat you on the street for committing crimes. <laughs> um, well, they like, will not, they, the they do not send you to jail. Um, like they might take you to jail, but they won't send you to Iron Hook prison necessarily. Okay. Um, like they don't have that authority, um, but they they can stop you from what you're doing and throw you in a cell. Um, and okay. It goes from there. That is my enemy. I've got a, his name's Darmot. He is a blue coat. All right. He hates me, and I hate him. That's fair. Um, and 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 the term buddies and rivals. You might have like a friendly rivalry with them. It does not oh, necessarily no. mean that they hate you. No, yeah, like no, Dharma <laughs> hates you. Of course he does. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. oh yeah. But we are playing a little loose with the term rival. It does not necessarily mean that they are actively out to kill you or hurt you. Um but it could be. Um it could it, be cordial. But they do not they do not have your best interests at heart. They will come up in the story and they will try to hurt you in some way. Um, whether okay. it's a friend, friendly banter or not. Um, that's that's what the rival is. Your buddy is someone you can rely on. Um, they will always have your back unless you start hurting them. It's going to be Telda, the beggar. Makes perfect sense to oh. me. I don't know how useful Telda will ever be, but that's the one that makes the most sense is having it as a pal. Or, or ooh, you know what? Useful. You know what? No, we're going we're gonna to scrap that. We're going to go with Frake. Frake, the locksmith, is my pal. Oh, uh, because yeah. with my magical uh, ghost veil thing, uh, I can get into houses and unlock them from the inside, and then he looks like a like an expert. It's like your okay. first job when you got here. I like that. I actually oh, yeah. really like that. Yeah, that's not what I would have thought of, but that's what I love about this game. Um. What about you, Ethan? You got a buddy and a rival? I see you do. I do, yeah. So my rival is, is Jaren, who's a blue coat. Archivist. Archivist. So he, he works as an archivist and is a blue coat, right? Okay. I'm like, yeah. that's not like anarchist. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then. <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, am I mixing this up? And then uh, on the other side, um, Celia, an, an information broker, is uh, is my pal. Oh, cool. We go, we go back. All Fucking right. shadow broker. I I like that a lot. I like those. I can definitely do something with both of those. I like it. There's not a bad choice to be made, to be honest. Um, and CJ, who so are my you thinking? Is what is a psychonaut? Okay, a psychonaut. Um, they are soldiers, or or mercenaries, or just people um that um they will take um performance enhancing drugs that drive them angry with rage <laughs> and um fight people i thought uh, it was going to be is... a little door that they put on the back of your head and they go in and, and play a no, game I... <laughs> this yeah, is like yeah, that's fallout. what i was thinking that, yeah yeah <laughs> this is like fallout like like people who take jet so that they can like just kick the shit out of you uh, okay so so they're like juicing and and busting heads. They're not. Yes, that in, that being in your, said, in your brain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. So there are drugs that exist, like in the in the in the rule book, and you can look them up. Um. Things like trance powder. Um. There's uh. There's berserker potions. I forget what they're called, but um. 
that like they basically like if you take a berserker potion before you make um, a prowess roll you'll get a bunch of bonuses your effect goes up um but um you lose the ability to like reason um the, uh, there is also a drug that i will will be part of this campaign that i like to call marching powder um it's an incredibly addicting drug that they force soldiers to take um that basically makes it so you don't have to sleep for days on end um but it makes it so that you have no ability to express empathy um, oh that sounds great for uh you know certain <laughs> industries yes also also you will not feel pain while you're on marching powder perfect um, dude so, yeah of course so it's a yeah. really powerful drug it's a very rare thing um you can't just like grab it off the street i will make you do rolls and stuff to get it but it exists and there are oh, NPCs. I totally don't want it. yeah there are npcs in the world that are using it and may use it against you um so just keep that in mind but um they're like that's what a psychonaut is now that being said um if you want to have a friend who's a psychonaut and you don't want him to be a total sociopath he could have been a psychonaut <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't <laughs> sure what a psychonaut was because I was also of the impression that it's like, oh, it's like something with like the psych or whatever. You're doing no, crazy yeah. mind I, games. Like, no, it's you don't have a mind and you're doing crazy yeah. stuff. Okay. <laughs> More psycho. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. But I see you did Stasia, an apothecary. Yeah. So I'm thinking me and her were college buddies and like I, maybe we weren't in the same field, but it's like, you know, we saw each other at the dorms. Like, what's up? No worries. I respect cool. your madness in your in your fellow in your own field. <laughs> yeah. And 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 hold off on describing too much about how you know them cuz you might find that like it would be really helpful to have a really shady apothecary right now because yeah. I need to get this illegal substance or oh. I need to go to the college and so like what if I just went and saw my friend Stasia who um would never deal drugs. Um Yeah. So yeah, yeah. like so definitely okay. keep it open for now because uh -huh. I'm going to let you guys introduce them. Um, at least your buddies. Um, I will probably um, um, leverage the rivals against you, um, kind of against your will. Um, <laughs> they'll come up if you roll poorly at certain times. Then my uh, so enemy is Eckerd, Eckerd, the corpse thief. Ooh, <laughs> corpse thief. Yes, uh, that's that's, that's a hell of a crime. But it's a, like, like yeah, oh, yeah, there's a lot of money to be made taking corpses, especially if you can get to them before their spirits are released. Yeah. That's what, what do people I, do I with corpses? Like, well, saying the spirits come out of the corpses. Yes, they do. Wait, you and like cram so them back nor in there? <laughs> so, oh my god, are people fueling more. machines with it? Okay, you, you know what? You know what? Yes. Yes, yes they are. <laughs> I, I will yeah. do a little bit of lore, lore, lore here. Um, so Gross. whenever a person dies in Dustball, um, a bell rings in the district and then a swarm of crows will show up and hover around them and then the spirit wardens who do are they are above the law they are completely anonymous people that you like could be anyone on the street but they are highly trained whispers occultists uh, magic users and um, like warriors and they will march down and they will find the body and then immediately try and incinerate it before the spirit's released and then also kill the spirit. So oh, the idea so is they're going to kill you twice. Nice. Yeah, well, because if, if the spirits don't go anywhere, you're going to run out of space. Exactly. Uh, well, and, and, yeah, and, exactly. Um, so the if, other you, thing if you is, torch a body while the spirit's still in there, it uh, the spirit is, like, destroyed? No. No, they, the, the reason why they're most of them are occultists and whisperers is because they'll basically torch the body, the spirit will escape, and then while it's doing that, they'll, like, pin it down and but either kill it. They had, like, it. some special goo that they, they boiled the body. Actually, um, even you guys have access to them. You have to get, like, ghost bane weapons um, to attack a ghost directly, or you have to have a special ability that allows you to do it. Um, okay. Um, and basically what they do is they're all equipped with that stuff. Um, arcane magic works against ghosts. They, they just basically kill the ghost. Um, though there's also a bunch of rumors around that they don't kill every ghost and that they do experiments on them. Oh, nice. Classy. Um, all right. Great. Yeah. Um, but Love if it. you commit murder, the spirit wardens are the ones who show up and they are worse than the blue coats in every way imaginable. Okay. Um, 
yeah, they 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 treat murder more seriously than anyone else in the city. Is it because um, the murder is more permanent, being spirit based, than because if you're willing to order once, you're going to do it again, and that means that you're just releasing ghosts in the city without proper care. Um, you're probably. you're making more work for them, and they don't like that. Yeah. They got enough on yeah. their plate with all of the other yeah. terrible, terrible things that are going on in this world. Yes. And and like I said, they operate at a level that like the city council, like no one in the city has more authority than a spirit warden. Um, okay. Though they also have no authority to control what's going on around them either. Um, They're like the they Inquisition. Just, yeah, they just show up and do what they want to do. That's all. That's okay. It. Um, sorry, I like the spirit ones. They're cool. Um, yeah, and then the next thing is to choose your vice. Now, Adam, you said you already chose a vice. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, so tell us about your vice. Well, so on the list here, the one that jumped out at me the most is uh, luxury for this guy. You know, this this dude's you know, grew up on the streets. Uh, so anytime he's got an opportunity to do something, like to, to treat himself, he's going to go for it. So I was kind of between that or uh, uh, pleasure is the other one that's kind of similar in that field. But I think luxury is more this guy's jam than pleasure. Like he's not out there to try to, you know, like get high and stuff like that. Like he's he's gonna get out there and he's gonna be like, this is pure cashmere and just like rub it on himself. And like, you know, he's like, I've got the Manny Petty lined up with all of the money I stole. You know, he, he wants, wants to treat himself. The finer things, the finer things that he's never had access to. Absolutely. Now, I, I they have a thing about vice purveyors in the book. I don't want you to think too hard about that because um, some of the things that you can do as a vice are very kind of weird. And so, okay. um, um, like I will say, I, I made a character once who was a 14 year old boy that was um, obsessed with his school teacher. And so his vice was obligation and he um, stalked her every single day, whenever he could. And so, like, that was when I rolled my, the, to indulge my vice. It was, I was stalking my teacher. Um, <laughs> That's so fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And so, in theory, in that instance, my vice purveyor is this random NPC that I made up. Um, but you might pick, like, gambling, and then specifically you like to, to, to go to dog races. And then there's actually, like, a place in, in the lore that exists right now where you can go and gamble on dog races. Um, so like that could be your vice purveyor, but don't worry too much about that. We'll get into that kind of while we're playing, like the first time you go to deal with your vice. Okay. Um, is, is kind of when we'll decide, cause that'll give you a bit of time to think about and learn a little bit about the city too, before you have cool. to make that decision. Um, all right, CJ, do you have a vice? Uh, I forgot what the list is. And Okay, um, actually, you can look. I think it's in there. Yeah. It's in there. Um, so it's at the bottom. I, it's, a, it, it's the very bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of the compendium there. Um, if you click on it, it'll kind of come up. But um, basically, think, of, like, before you even pick from the list, the way I like to do it is I like to think of something that would be incredibly inconvenient to the crew at times. Um, so like being an alcoholic and going on a bender is a problem sometimes for the crew, um, as well as for you personally, but it, it can also be like, you like to wander underneath the city and like kind of experience like these horrible haunting things that exist only there, um, which is, is under weird. Um, so yeah, like. The word itself might kind of bring up an idea that you have in your head. Um, I'm willing to work with anything. Um, as long as you think it would be potentially problematic for your character and for the crew. Because that's the only thing I mm -hmm. need it to be. First thing that just comes to my head is just being like, gets hyper focused on something. And it's just like, like, hey, are you going to make this thing for us? No, no, no. I really want to figure out the, the frequency of this extraplasm or whatever. Okay. That to me actually sounds like obligation. Um, and so you are devoted to a cause with that cause being scientific research, we can say. Okay. Um, 
So that you get so obsessed with a new idea that you have that you drop everything else at the expense of yourself and the crew. So like you may not sleep for days on end, which is going to impact your ability to help out. Um, you may stop doing things that you're supposed to be doing. You may hurt your friends. These are all things that can happen if you overindulge on your vice. Okay. Um, so I, that's a totally reasonable one. And it's one that I've actually seen in another actual play podcast. Um, it was done a little bit differently. But yeah, like like obsessive behavior, totally, totally fine. Um, I would just throw an obligation and say vice purveyor yourself <laughs> uh, or your imagination or something. Because one of the options that can come up is that you lose your vice purveyor. Um, so we can find a I way to make that work. In the madness of it. Well, you, you lost your creativity. You you feel you're in a slump or something, right? Um, that's this something game we can is totally so do. relatable sometimes already. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ethan? What's your vice? Not your characters, yeah. what's yours? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so okay. more to the character, um, is I think I'm I think I'm gonna go with Faith. I think um that this this character, um, who I think I've decided on the name Vey. Uh, so I think Vey um, doesn't really know themselves and they are looking for a direction. So I'm actually going to just go and pick one of the random faiths and kind of see where that goes. And that might, you okay. know, update or change. We'll kind of see um, how long they're lost for or if they're found. Absolutely. And so, yeah, like I said, Vice Purveyor doesn't necessarily need to be decided now. Um, I am totally fine to um, improv a horrifying cult that you're a member of, if that's what you want. <laughs> um, I've done it before in other games, so. Other um, games in life? You know, I like to pretend to be in a cult whenever I go to the bank. Yeah. Um, and then weird. the other, the last thing we got here is uh, your name. Um, your character should have a name. Um, an alias. So obviously you don't necessarily want to be going around being like, oh, my name is Vey Helker and be prepared to be robbed. Um, you may want to say something else instead. Um, so your character can have an alias. It's not a requirement. Um, common aliases tend to be either one words, uh, either one word by itself or the blank, um, like, like the Admiral, um, is one that like exists. Um, um, it can also just be a fake name. Um, so it can really be anything you want. But I've got a name. Not general. Yes, um, you do. It's Ludbids Acton? Yes. Nice, I said it. Also known as Ludes. Ludes. I like it. Um, and then for look, um, you can put it in the character sheet, but it's just something to think about. Um, again, you don't have to decide right now. What does your character look like? Just a couple of words that you can kind of go back to. Um, um, like I know for um, for our friend Ludes, who's from Tycharos, um, he'll have like a, a freaky, uh, like demonic trait. Uh, oh yeah. So that'll be part of your looks for sure. But it can also be what your character likes to wear, things like that. Um, I should say, in terms of what your character is wearing, it's really cold in Duskwell all the time. Like even like in how the cold is really cold. Um, I don't Snowy know. Cold? Um, no, it, it 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 never snows. It's always kind of like just right above freezing temperature. Okay, so it's it's oh. just just warm enough to not snow. Yeah. Well, it also it, it rains constantly. Um, okay. Here. So in this in the summer, it might be like 15 degrees Celsius on the hottest day. Um, nothing. Someone do the conversion on that. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know my Fahrenheit's. Um, that's okay. No one does. Double no, it, not it, 30. It'd be like 60. It'd be like 60 degrees. Oh, 60. That's fine. That's fine. But that's like yeah. the hottest day of the year. Um, the rest of the time, it might be like 30 degrees. Like oh, okay. Two. Um, kind of right around freezing is, is where water freezes here. Yes, so it'd be like kind of right around there. So in the winter, it might slush or like sl um, be oh, sleet great. as opposed to rain, um, but it never really Gross. sticks around. Okay, so yeah. from within the book, uh, the north of Akros, where Duskfall lies, experiences three seasons: a frigid winter, uh, a windy and rainy spring, and a stormy fall. You know what? There you go. I like that answer better. 
I, I okay. must have missed that in the book. Um, so yeah, it does snow. It snows for like two months of the year, and it's like off. Okay. Well below freezing. Just that oh, bitter so cold. The, the freeze your your snot to your nose hair is cold. Yeah. Um, and this will be taking place at least when we start in the fall season. So um, the idea is like, is as you walk around, um, you can definitely see your breath on the air, and it's raining. That that's okay. kind of very dramatic. Atmosphere. I love it. Yeah. Um. Two two two. So yeah. Um. What about you, CJ? Do you have a name for your character? Oh, I'm one of those types who could take like two to three hours on the game. So maybe we'll I'll have to come back to you. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. You'll be it anonymous. Works. You could just not share your name at the beginning, and then we'll just go through, right? Yeah, and then exactly. once the confidence is built, then it, then it can sit yeah. in. And then there is a list of names here, but it can really be anything you want. Um, if you want your character to be named, um, what is it, Anastasia St. Bernard? Um, you can be. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then that's it. Um for, for character creation. So once you kind of have all that set up, set out, you have a character. But we're gonna actually, we're gonna kind of outline the crew, but we're not gonna finish it, if that makes any sense. Because um, there's an aspect to crew creation that involves like um, getting upgrades and adjusting how you relate to factions and stuff like that. We're gonna do the first score before we decide how you feel about factions. So that you might have some basis for why you feel that way about them in the game. Um, if you look in the compendium packs, you can look at crew types. Um, the three of you are going to decide right now what kind of crew you want to be. If you want to be assassins, bravos, occult, hawkers, shadows, or smugglers. Um, because some of them are less obvious than others, bravos are... Um, like kind of like straight toughs and like like violent gangs. Um, they might also be mercenaries for hire. Um, and um, hawkers are people who sell illegal goods, um, which is different than smugglers, which are people who transport illegal goods. Um, and shadows are thieves, spies, and saboteurs. Um, um, so like okay. shadows are kind of sneaky guys. Um, they're 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 gonna take stuff that doesn't belong to them and give them to somebody else, all sorts of stuff. Um, picking a crew type does not stop you from doing other kinds of jobs if they come up in the fiction. So just because you're bravos doesn't mean that you can't break into a party and try to um, to talk your way through it. It just means that you may not get as much experience at the end um, because you get extra experience for dealing with problems violently if you're bravos. Okay, um, I I think uh, I think Bravos uh, is not us. No, we don't, I, I don't think really have any punchy guys. I was about yeah, to ask, like, I'm like, how, the how, <laughs> how culty are is, is this group kind of feeling? Because we've kind of kicked Very, off already. I think with like really the leech incredible. and the lurk, or like it's like it's real. We're really spiritual coming in. I think uh, two thirds, right? <laughs> I, well, I'm I'm I've got He's I've got not, demon like blood. So yeah, I'm in. Let's let's be a cult. Think... Let's be a cult. <laughs> okay. I don't think my character is particularly like in that whole like. Oh yeah, let's get like. Wait, it's it's more of like a. I is she's more interested in the in the physical properties of the metaphysical world and not so much as like, oh great Cthulhu, I love you. <laughs> that being it's said, okay. you don't it have to could very it. well be. Yeah, I was going to say, you might have access to, like, they might have access to things because they're that's kind true. of more occult that you wouldn't otherwise have access to, and that's maybe why you're there. That's how you get the The other thing seed. is, is like, even you're as... Not, you're <laughs> not, you don't believe in it, you just want the stuff. And, and like, we'll find a way to make it work, obviously, if yeah. if you're open to being an occult. Now, if CJ has an alternative pitch, oh, like, I'm, absolutely yeah, totally willing to hear. Because, mm -hmm. like... All of them are cool. Uh, um, I'll say all of them are cool, except hawkers are kind of hard to make stores <laughs> for. Okay. Yeah. Like, except I hawkers, think... they're they're lame. Like... Yeah. No, they're they're that really one. cool. Fuck. Them. No, but yeah. No, I, I I've done a really cool um, spirit trafficking campaign with the hawkers thing. 
It's just, it is hard to wrap your head around how they do scores sometimes. That's all. I think, uh, I think, I think we're not Bravos. Uh, it sounds like Hawkers would be less fun um, based off of what you just said. Uh, I'm on board for cult. Uh, I could definitely get behind shadow. I could do smuggling and like I could do assassin. I could do any of those ones. So uh, that's that's my uh, five cents. Four cents. Four cents. That's my four cents. There we go. And CJ was about to say something. I'd be fun of cult or smugglers. Like I, I don't know what you what you put your stats in, Adam. But I don't. Uh, uh, sneaky stuff. Because I know because I know spider isn't. I'll, also isn't very combat heavy it's not i i mean mind you like there is like when just because you're fighting someone doesn't mean that you have to roll skirmish if you can convince me that you are fighting someone um using a different skill mm -hmm. um and it makes sense in the moment i'll let you roll it it's just gonna um change the position and effect um, so like if you're using study to kind of bob and weave and avoid strikes, I'll say that's fine. I'll even say it has standard effect, but it's really, it's going to be riskier than if you were okay. actively fighting them mm -hmm. and you were kind of a person who could stand a bang with them, you know, um, like that, that's something I always take in the, into account as the GM. That's what the game encourages. Um, you aren't just going to roll the same three skills over and over again. Um, because there's going to be times where it doesn't make sense or it's just not going to be as effective. Um, and so, yeah, like we'll get into that for sure. But like you can totally fight someone um, with prowess or finesse um, and that that can totally make sense in the moment. Um, you can even fight someone with a two. Um, I've seen people do it. Um, if there's a ghost in the area, you can kind of sick the ghost on them or you can push them into the ghost field with you. Like, that that's a problem for a lot of people lots of interesting ways to engage with the world besides just fighting people directly um that being said a cult um they say right on it it's acolytes of a deity um it can be a little bit more esoteric than that um we can kind of talk about that and see how we feel about it um we got about 20 minutes until our break so um yeah, like, if you guys are going to be a cult, like, let's kind of talk about what kind of cult you're going to be. Um, or are, are we kind of leaning towards smugglers or anything else? Like, I just want everyone to get their thoughts out there. I think we're leaning to cult. I think I think everyone went, I could do cult or something else. And so, like, you know, whether or not on purpose or accidentally, I think we just found another religion. So, Aaron, why don't you talk <laughs> us through making this up? Okay. <laughs> so... Sorry, I gotta find the page in the book. Crew creation. So you choose a crew type, which we just did. Um, just gonna make sure that everyone is good with that. Um, so I'm just gonna put it in now. You guys start with two coins. You guys are not gonna have access to those coins to spend just yet. Um, um, because this first score is taking place before you acquired those two coins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you guys are tier zero with a strong hold. Um, what that means is you guys roll tier when it comes to like kind of the quality of items you have access to. Um, and what that means is like you guys can have knives and swords, um, but they're chipped, they're rusty, they're not high quality because you guys are the poorest people in the city. Like that's where you're at. Tier zero, you guys are not eating well. Um, the size of your crew, or in this case, the size of your covenant or whatever you guys end up calling it, um, is not huge. If you guys have cohorts, there'll be like one or two of them, not like seven or eight or 20. Um, you guys are just starting out from the very bottom. Um, yeah. And tier is kind of just a general reflection of the quality of life. So when you guys eventually level up to tier one, um, you guys just, without spending extra coin or anything like that, you guys can just have better accommodations for your characters, um, which doesn't do anything mechanically. You can just say like, I actually have a house now. Um, 
and and like you eat better food and you don't have to worry about this or that like you don't have creditors on your back anymore but at tier zero times are tough and it's probably why you guys are actively trying to gain power and influence and money um and you start with zero rep rep is is how you um level up um your tier you have to spend rep and you have to spend coin to level up um rep is just kind of your reputation about town um speaking of reputation we need to choose an initial reputation um so that yeah so if you click the word crew reputation you can kind of see some options there but this will be kind of an idea of how you guys feel like the three of you would be known um or your cult would be known um it can be different than how you interact as an individual character with people. So, um, like you might be a savvy cult. Um, and that's like the general vibe that people get is that you handle things in a very savvy way, um, when you're on the job, but you might be a mess personally and outside of the score. Um, um, what's his name that, um, sorry, I'm stolen in the name Vay. They might be a mess, and he might be kind of an asshole, and he's not very savvy personally. That that those are two different things. Job so, done. Cry at home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so some of the options are alluring, or ambitious, brutal, cruel, honorable, monstrous, um, sinister, serene, transcendent, or even strange strange might not be a bad one considering your um a cult it might be very strange okay so people. are we are we creating our own culty religion or are we picking something from existing lore that's up to you guys i can look up like the existing religions though they're pretty big to be honest like you will inevitably be making something up okay um, yeah I, I think a cult finds you. I don't think you really started. <laughs> I think, you know, what did I yeah, sign up and that, is this, there, what, what's going on here? In. <laughs> and so I'll say this as a cult, are you guys um, basically proselytizing an idea, a concept? Are you working on behalf of a demon or, or an old, old, an old God? Are you guys, um, out in the world trying to change the spirit laws um like you think that ghosts should be allowed to roam free um or at least the ones that aren't feral uh because there are um reconciled ghosts which are people who maintain their sanity for years and years and years beyond death and they're I basically just people free range ghosts i think ghosts should be organic able to <laughs> organic yeah free no range that's ghosts. okay there is a faction called the Reconciled, which is a bunch of ghosts that think they should vote. Um, I don't think ghosts should vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, honestly, like, you got to think about it for a minute here, right? So these ghosts, right? Like, let's say this guy died 100 years ago, and he's all like, I think certain kind of people shouldn't be allowed to go into certain kind of establishments. Like, dude, that's old-fashioned thinking. You've been dead for 100 years. Things have changed. Like, I don't want that guy voting. I, I mean, that's like a real problem is that 90 year olds are allowed to vote too. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Any, uh, any 90 year old that's listening to this podcast. First of all, how'd you figure that out? Second of all, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Third of all, why don't you consider signing up for the Patreon? Throw a couple of coins in that dragon sword and you can get some excellent content. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, so, like, that's something you get for you guys to kind of workshop, is, like, um, and, and we should probably do it now before we get too involved into what kind of upgrades you're getting and stuff, um, because it'll matter. Like, what, like, what's, what's your cause? What, like, why are you guys starting a cult? I think I'm in it for the, uh, for the, for the money. <laughs> I mean, fair. That's I mean, I'm that's the other thing, too. It could be a total sham. Like, like I'm, I'm willing to run that game too. Um, there might not actually be a deity or a force or an idea that you actually believe in. I so uh, unless someone else comes up with something that really, really uh, strikes me, 
my guy doesn't believe in in our cause. He's just in it for the money. Like unless somebody says like, oh, this thing, and it's it's like super cool, then maybe he's in. But most likely he's he's in it for the money. All right. And I had um, talked about trying to find faith before, and so I'm I'm happy to kind of go in this and go like, well, like you know, they they kind of presented themselves to me, and it's just as likely as everything else going on around here. So I'm happy to okay approach yeah. it with that. Yeah, your vice, your faith vice, may very well be the cult that you started. It's just you're a little too into it. Like that that could be <laughs> what it is. Um. And that kind of sounds like maybe where it's going. It's like, you're the only honest one. Uh, but what, what about you, CJ? What are you thinking? Like, what kind of cause do you think your character might get behind? At least enough that they're not going to, that they are actively going to help these people out. Uh, I was, since I was saying earlier about how, like, the, because that's, because Dusk all, Dusk all, Dusk all, whatever that. <laughs> dusk waffle. Dusk all, yeah, Dusk waffle. Uh, there you said it was laws against spirit, right? Yes, yes, there so are. So I would say then, like a whole, her deal would be like, hey, can we not have these restrictions so we can actually have some proper fucking science in this bitch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and actually, you would have some allies with that within, like even the Sparkrite Guild, which is the like, people who um, do most of the engineering in the city. Um, they're the largest engineering firm in the world. Um, and also they're the people who, um, create the lightning barriers and, and protect the city from the outside forces. Um, they, they actually build and maintain them. Um, so like that, like you would have allies in that thought, um, process. So it's not like totally unheard of within the, the world as it is. Um, but the spark rights are, are definitely not something that you could just join as like, like it's a very kind of like nepotism based system yeah no a guy yeah you kind of do um they're they're also very wealthy and they all live in white crown um which is kind of that like nice. the upper upper echelon of society is in white crown um you literally probably would not be allowed to walk there um without mm. sneaking in um right. so like that that is totally something that would work within the world um um, is the idea of, like maybe maybe your faith or this cult is is like is about like preaching that spirits are important to to humanity um it's another part of life um and or like that there are tools to be used like we can kind of workshop around that idea um like I don't know what are you guys thinking I like that um my guy doesn't buy it but I like it <laughs> fair yeah like, like, I, it sounds it, like yeah sounds like your character just sees this as a way to make money and it totally is because like you can definitely skim a little off the top you're inevitably going to um whatever you guys end up doing you're you're gonna find a way to make it work um so that you make money because i have to pay you at the end of every score nice um, yeah um yeah. How about you, Ethan? What kind of... Do you think that, like, your character could have a faith that's based around ghosts in some way? I mean, and I think that's, like, the dichotomy I'm looking to kind of pull in on this, and that, like, I feel like I picked someone who's very practical, and it's like, oh, it's trades and this, but then, like, I, I want to kind of have this whole um, not sure about kind of the magic -y ghost part of this world and trying to understand, like, you know, where their place is in it and that like you know it is creepy and weird and like well your spirit may not necessarily be attached to your body and and all of that so yeah that's why it's like oh yeah let's 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 go with a cult like i think that's absolutely something of like you know you end up in a room and someone talks to you for two hours about how like here's what happens when you die and here's the real reason and this is what you should be trying to do with your life and go on Man, that makes a lot of sense. Like, like all these things like actually lines up with how awful everything is. Like, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> it uh, that reminds me of the time I went to a Cutco knife job interview. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna sell some knives. I'm like, wow, these are really impressive knives. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I love it. Um, and the other thing too, I should say, Ethan, um, 
your faith does not have to be um, like your faith vice could be a different thing altogether. Because um, mm -hmm. even though we're picking the cult thing, it does sound like a little bit less like you're trying to um, sacrifice people to the gods. Um, and it sounds a little bit more like you guys are kind of just working like against spirit laws, um, which is a totally cool way to take this. And it works really well with what I have planned. Yeah, um, that or make more spirits, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that yeah. could be a thing too. Like, and, and we'll figure that out, like, more or less. I just kind of want to have an idea and for you guys to have an idea of what you guys are up to. Um, but your faith could be something like, um, I'm going to pitch a couple things to you, Ethan, for the faith, just um, for your vice purveyor. Yeah. Based on what I'm hearing. Um, so you could be a worshiper of some strange old forgotten god um, in secret. Um, so it's like totally unrelated to this. It could be that you have an obsession with spirits. Um, or you may even allow yourself to be possessed by spirits as part of like a spiritual practice. Um, you might find yourself wandering in the canals underneath the city. Uh, to experience the horrors underneath there, just to see what it's like. Um, I like that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off right there, and I think it's just putting yourself into the horrors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah. Like that's. I think that's really cool. Like and like, it might be like, you don't necessarily preach that to everyone that comes in the church, but it's something that you like to do. Um. Yeah. Um. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's totally um, awesome. So I think we have enough of an idea of what you're doing that we can establish your hunting grounds. So this, um, as a cult, I personally think that your lair location and your hunting grounds are probably going to be in the same district, but they don't have to be. Um, what a hunting grounds is, is where you guys go and commit crimes. Um, your favorite place to go commit crimes and the place that you have established a connection with someone to allow you to without repercussion. Um, that That is part of character creation is you'll pick a patron that allows you to operate in a district and if you don't pay off this person um, then they're going to move against you because they owe you money. Like, like you owe them money, basically. Um is everything in Duskball is owned by somebody else. Um, except for your lair. That's the only thing you own in this world right now. Um, and so, I don't know how much you guys have read up on the different areas, but if you go to the journals tab, um, which is the open book in the center of the chat log, um, I have a few pages or a few journals I put in there. Um, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna make you read it all because there's a lot. Um, but, um, I'll just quickly outline what the different districts are like. Um, so Barrow Cleft is kind of like, um, a laborer's district. Um, a lot of, like, unions live there and a lot of union workers. Um, there's also, um, a large area called the Radiant Energy Farm, um, which is, um... Like, basically, they have an artificial sun that they use to grow crops. Um, it's a reasonably, like, like the people here aren't very rich, but they produce a lot of stuff that makes other people rich. And there's a lot of valuable stuff here. Um, and so, like, um, blue coat presence is higher um, than in other areas. Um, they also have, like, a large market um, that explicitly does not sell illegal goods. Um, there's Brightstone. That's kind of where, like, your upper-class wealthy people live. Um, this is where you would find your, um, not your Marie Antoinette's, but, like, the people that went to her parties. Um, okay. you know, um, these people have more money than you. They're not afraid to tell you about it. Um, and, um, there's also a lot of, like, kind of weird shady stuff. People here tend to get, um, kicks out of, like, um, be a cult they kind of find it fun and they're more likely to engage in it that way 
Uh, Char Holo is um, where the bulk of the workforce of the city lives. Um, it's cheap, noisy, cramped, and sweltering from cook fires and hissing steam pipes. Uh, there is a lot of poverty in this area. Um, yeah, there's an area called the Sheets, which is just basically like a tent city. Um, there's a lot of homeless people in this area as well. Um, and they also have a market where you're kind of kind of find low quality goods for real cheap. Um, Charter Hall is like an upscale area. It's like the university town of this city. Um, and I should say that this city is huge. Um, probably larger than Toronto or Detroit by like a lot. Um, like um, it would take you like at least a day f to walk from one end of the city to the other. Um, so each of these districts is like its own small city. Um, I think the population is something like 1.2 million people. Um, but like for uh, for this time and era, or sorry, no, I think the population is like 6 million people. But for this era, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. Um, but Charter Hall is where the university is. Um, a lot of like... Um, rich people live there. Um, there's like constant um, blue coat patrols and stuff like that. Um, Coleridge, um, I think I talked about it briefly. Um, it's There's a lot of machinists and industrial laborers. Um, there's a, a couple of huge factories and a mine there. Um, and then they also have like an abandoned um, rail area where people have just stolen old um, train cars and made them into houses. Um, and people live there. Um, what do we got? We got Crow's Foot, um, which I did not copy. Um, but Crow's Foot is kind of like a mishmash of um, like several people. It's um, it's well populated with criminals. Um, like basically, the blue coats don't operate here um, without permission from at least one of the gangs in the area um and there is a little bit of a cult activity kind of happening here um the docks um is exactly what it sounds like there's a lot of docks um because a lot of ships come and go from the city um this is where the leviathan hunters kind of um hang out with their giant naval ships the imperial military has a presence here um but there's also corners um where like a lot of like Ghost trafficking occur here as well, and a lot of smuggling comes through the ports or the docks. What is Gunslow, ghost trafficking? Um, the illegal trade of spirits and spirit like products that you make from refining spirits. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm keeping things vague because sure. basically it means whatever you want it to mean. But I just like, do you, do you like trap them like a like a Pokemon? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And oh, all right. Like that's what cars. a hall that's what a hollow is too, by the way, is a trapped ghost that you've been basically enslaved. Um they have to Ooh. obey what you say. Like whoever creates it, um, that that spirit now inhabits like a mechanical body and they have to do what you say. Um, or if you're a vampire, apparently, like that's the whole like it's a dead body with like a live spirit in it. Yes. Oh. Um Jeez. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, if your character dies, um, you have the option to come back as a ghost, and you, <laughs> and then from there you can become a, a hall, um, like um, a hall or a vampire, um, or you can stay as a ghost. Like that's totally up, fine too. Um, Dunslow is where Iron Hook Prison is, so that's actually where you guys would be starting. Um, though, like you can move anywhere in the city; it's not a problem. Um, basically. Um, this is like the by far the poorest district most of the people who live here um are either just out of prison um or um work at the eel farms um this is also where a lot of people um as a last desperate attempt attempt to um to make a living of some kind will become deathland scavengers um, which means that you wander out into the wastes um, without protection from the lightning barriers and um, try and get artifacts or whatever you're looking for it there. 
um, and you risk being like assailed by demons and ghosts and stuff like that. And so it's like an incredibly dangerous job. That that sounds have. awesome. That sounds awesome. Yes. Yeah, and that's something that you can look into for sure. Uh, Night Market is um, is a large um, sprawling market and series of businesses. Um, there's a lot of money in the area, but it's not as rich as Brightstone or White Crown. Um, but um, there's a lot of commerce that happens here. It's also, as the name implies, where you would find a lot of high quality illegal goods. Um, some people do like spirit trading and stuff here as well. Um, Silkshore um, is kind of like, um, it's best navigated by gondolas as visitors. It's it's the red light district, okay. um, basically. Um, but they also make like, they have like a couple of really high quality like tailors and stuff in the area. Um, Six Towers is a little bit of history here. Six Towers at one point was what Redstone is now, but then the lightning barriers failed in that district and they got consumed and like a lot of rich people died. Um, and then they managed to re reset, like they managed to clear it out and set up the um, the lightning barriers again. And now it is one of the poorer districts. So there's some very like house poor nobles that live in the area. Um, and what house poor is, is it means that they, they own like estates and they have really nice stuff, but they have no income. Um, there is a man named Lord Skurlock, um, who people rumor to be like immortal and possibly as long lived as the emperor himself. Um, but, um, and he kind of, um, is actively trying to rebuild the community. Um, there is a ton of areas to hide in this this area. Um, a lot of unclaimed old estates, um, properties, businesses um, that were abandoned when everybody got murdered by ghosts. Um, I talk about this one a lot because I actually think it would be a good one to start a cult in, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, <clears throat> and White Crown. Um, I will say that you probably do not want to live in White Crown because you will not fit in and everyone will know you're there. But if you find a way to convince me that it's a good idea, I'll totally let you do it. But White Crown um, is where the upper echelon of the city live. It's also um, the highest highest secure. Um, the blue coats don't even operate here. They're not allowed in um, because the Imperial, Imperial military is too busy um, patrolling the streets. Um, they are by far the richest um, there is some weird occult stuff that happens here that if you guys end up in White Crown, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more, but there is some occultness that happens here. Um, but there is no crime in White Crown. It's the uh, one area where they kind of have really put a clamp down on uh, criminal organizations. And that's all of them. Um, I know that was a lot, but just kind of wanted to get through that. I think, uh, I think trying to... If we're trying to recruit people for a cult, I think, you know, maybe uh, by the college is probably a good place. Okay. That's my, that's my, you know, opinion. Which one was the college? That's Charter Hall. It has zero out of uh, cult. Yeah, but you guys could be the first. That's okay. <laughs> uh, You know. Not a lot of uh, competition in that department, which is exactly. Um, yeah, and I, I could definitely see you guys doing that. Um, yeah, there's We're a lot of um, a more academic approach to a cult instead of religious. <laughs> yeah, like you guys don't have to be raving lunatics. Like, like, like that's like you guys can totally kind of savvy your way through being a cult, and that's probably like kind of like Scientology, you know. <laughs> um, sorry if you're a Scientologist. Um. <laughs> But yeah, like not, not for offending you, just sorry if you are one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. I'm, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not, I think that anybody, everybody's cool. You know, everybody, whatever, whatever you got going on, you know, it's cool. Unless you're a Scientologist. Or like That's Jeffrey That's the Dunn. one. Or Jeffrey Down. You, you know what? Yeah, no, no, he's not cool either. You know what? He's, <laughs> you know what? You're right. I, I, I hope so <laughs> but yeah no um 
the charter hall would be an interesting one that would be um like like this kind of is a big decision because it'll definitely change the tone of how you guys engage right um like are you kind of coming through and and finding poor people and trying to find ways to like rise them up or are you kind of taking rich people and, and taking their money and using it to support your causes and like that's, that's what that. i'm thinking you know like my thought it just purely from uh you know uh not looking at any kind of numbers or anything like that my thought is if you're if you're trying to set up a cult like that that is not like you know uh like looney tunes like we're trying to like there's some there's some real reasonable ideology behind this thing i think that people that are going to college their minds are opening up you know and they're they're getting new information and new ideas you know, you might be able to be like, hey, dude, what do you think about like spirits being, you know, having rights? And they're more likely to be like, you know, that makes sense and think about it. Also, if they can afford to go to college, they probably have money or their parents do. And you get them into the cult, you get the parents to send the money. Uh, you know, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see you haven't heard from me in a bit. What are you thinking? I'm not against that line of thinking. I, I, to be honest, I'm liking it too. But um, Ethan, yeah, no, absolutely. I think, um, I think you know, going to um, like Hollow is going to have a bit more you know security, and so it might mess us up a few times. But in general, if we're you know getting bigger payloads out of it, then it could absolutely be worthwhile. So yeah, let's do it. Well, uh, and you guys might not be unfriendly with blue coats. Like you don't have to be. A, enemies with them it's except not like for we're going uh, around like it's since, it's since we chose cult it's not like we're going around in like committing outright crimes we're just talking to I, I i mean you you will probably commit crimes at some point yeah, I, mean, you commit crimes. I mean <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> yeah everyone but... everyone except for adam's character can be as friendly as they want with like the forces like the blue coats or the inspectors like you guys can build positive relationships with law enforcement and they might look the other way that's something you guys can do. Um, the only one that I'll say that you probably can't build positive relationships with is the spirit wardens because you would have no way of knowing yeah. who they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, They're all like just Batman. That... Yeah, they are all like Batman, except that like it's not obvious that they're billionaires if you really think about yeah. it. <laughs> you got some really <laughs> expensive gear there, Batman. You must yeah. have Bruce Wayne money. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like we're we're established our hunting grounds, um, um, which is is going to be uh, Charter Hall, which is um, which is perfect. Um, what about your lair? Um, we're okay. So this map is uh, really really tiny. I mean, like it's a big map, so the details are tiny. Um, Where is you... Charter Hall? Oh, um, Charter Hall. Okay, so if we look at the big map. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna compare it to the small map. Um, it's a little square one. Um, it's beside Crow's Foot. Um, so sorry, it is very tiny. I'm gonna pop out and zoom in. Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't even think about popping. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You can pop out and zoom in on this picture. It is a very high quality picture. I can't do that personally, but um, I can zoom in really, really far. Real the quick on it. Is kind of like right in the middle. Yeah. On a technical like, side, how do you open the book? Or like this, the, the gray picture. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh shit, I just <laughs> closed. I, I I don't know why. I, I went to clo close the, the thing and I just closed Foundry. I'm, 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 I don't know uh -oh. why. Big and more technical problems. I, I printed out my own um to go nice. through and follow along, but oh, um, nice, which I have been referencing oh, all in papers oh. and such. But So we got to re-jump okay. in. Yeah, sorry. Um, I am not quite signed in yet. Uh, go ahead. You guys can hop back in. I apologize. That was on me. I just did, like, the dumbest thing in the world. Um, yep, yeah, and you guys are all popping back in. Yeah, so for me, I I just see the title, like, the opening action rolls and, like, push assist protect, like, that view. It sounded like you guys were talking about a map. I can't see that map. Oh, okay. Um, are you under journals? Um, so there's the where your character sheet is under actors two to the right of that there's a briefcase and then there's an open book click that 
and then district outline. You should have access. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you were like pinging certain spots. So was that like... Oh, no, I wasn't pinging anything because this isn't a map. I, I didn't drag it out as a map yet. I probably will just so that we can kind of zoom around and look at it. Oh, this um, is, yeah, I can look at this in the book. It's so much, so much clearer. Yes, yeah. This is... Or anything. Um, but here, I can just show the players too. Um, yeah. So now I forced you to look at it. That's the big map there. Okay, cool. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like like uh, CJ was saying, it is kind of towards the middle. I believe it's... Um, um, there's the White Crown, which is that big island at the top. Um, south of there, there's the docks where you can see all the docks. To the right of that is Brightstone. To the right of that is Six Towers. And to the south of Brightstone directly is Charter Hall, which is that kind of... Um, it, it's that larger area. Um, it's like smack decide, in the center. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it does border up against a couple of other places. And so your lair might not be in Charter Hall. In fact, I don't think that necessarily makes sense. But no, you I'll could totally... To um, I actually think Six Towers might not be the worst place for it. That's my pitch. Because um, Six Towers is kind of... You know, like, there's a lot of abandoned buildings. There's a lot of basements. There's a lot of... Um, open areas. It's not like the poorest district by any means, but um, th there's not a lot of people, there's not a lot of stuff here worth stealing, so they don't really bother to like um, you know, patrol very often um, in Six Towers. Um, there's um, a little bit of criminal influence, there's a pretty high occult influence in the area. Um, so like you wouldn't be totally out of place, like so you go and recruit from Predator Hall and bring them over to Six Towers or or another area. So the Six Towers does have the University Quarter. Yes, but the University is abandoned. Uh, I see. Because they were murdered by ghosts. Perfect, yeah. I love it. As these things happen. But that sounds like a great place to have a cult where we yeah. take University people and yeah, yeah, bring, let's do that. Yeah, bring them no. to the old University and be like, here's some ghosts. Like, this is what you signed <laughs> up for get in there i love yeah, it absolutely i love it i, I love um, it so, yeah. i love it this is this is getting yeah. weird already i'm in all right and now let's just quickly describe what your layer looks like um so i did already on the cruise sheet so if you go to actors tab you can open up the cruise sheet you guys should all be able to edit uh, don't it have and access. observe it okay well i'm gonna fix that um so i made everyone including myself the owner. there's uh so you guys can click that and look at it. Um, so this stuff you can edit however you want. Um, it does work a little differently than the character sheets because they didn't have both. They just had character sheets that were like a little bit upgraded. Um, so I'm going to type into layer. I'm going to put say six towers and I'm going to put a dash because um, also talk about where the crew makes its layer. Um, so it's probably very modest or an abandoned sort of place. Choose one or create your own. Is it a half sunk? Sorry. Is it a half sunken grotto in the city's maze like underground canals? An abandoned watchtower? An unassuming back rooms of a merchant shop? A small abandoned house? A rickety tin, sh tin roof shack? A junked rail car? Um, so that's kind of like, that's the quality of, 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 uh, layer that you have found yourselves with. I mean, so I think you were saying with like how Six Towers is abandoned, then I'd I'd say we could probably get it. Yeah, absolutely. We say like I think, a uh, wing of yeah. the abandoned university. Um, yeah, you could totally do it in a wing of an abandoned university. Maybe it's the lat. Maybe it's like the greenhouse or something outside that's like not been collapsed yet. Um, yeah, I like that part. Like part of the actual university. Okay. Yeah, what um I don't know. Pick a pick something about this university that you think would be cool like that that you guys live in. Is what, it like what, the observatory? Uh, what happened? What happened that uh, wrecked this place? Um so the lightning barriers fell and Okay, so um, it got Malevol like ghosted. Yeah, Sorry. malevolent spirits just showed up and just started killing everyone. 
that that's what happened. Um, and okay. so like a lot of the people, like these were very rich people who were not prepared for that at all. Um, gotcha. but they all kind of boom, they, they, um, they either died, perished, or they relocated elsewhere in the city. And that's kind of most of the people who live in Brightstone now are from six towers okay. or their family was from six towers. Um, this only happened about a decade ago, by the way. You guys were probably alive when this happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my guy's a little bit older than 10. So let's say, uh, ooh, um, I think, like, I got a, I got a couple ideas kicking around in the old can here that I think would be cool for this, uh, this idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them out there and see what you guys think. Um, I think it would be cool to, uh, for obvious reasons, to be set up in the library at the school. I mean, obviously, like, that's fucking cool. Um, I think that would be super rad. I also think it would be cool to be in, like, the Dean's house. Um, you know, I think that would be cool. So it's like, uh, you know, you get, uh, a bunch of, like, classy, like, uh, like, stuff in the house that's all, like, wrecked. You know, it's, it's like, it used to be prestigious and beautiful, but now, like, it's waterlogged or, like, uh, you know, burnt or whatever. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty evocative. I like that. Um, okay. Uh, so I guess I got two ideas. Those are my ideas that I've got so far. Uh, whatever, whatever you guys have, uh, is totally, totally rad too. So whatever you guys are thinking, I want to hear. My vote was library, so. Oh, all right. All right. I think do that. that. Yeah, I like it. I like Cool. So in my mind, and, and it can totally we can describe it differently in the moment. We're not we're not in game right now, so it, it can totally change. I I kind of imagine like you have this library and like you have this awesome impressive front door that's covered in vines. Um and then just to the right of it, there's a hole in the wall and you just have some canvas sheets thrown up. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, like it's you it's know. you know um, like the, I would imagine like big rusted out like gigantic chains across the door or whatever, giant padlock impenetrable and then like busted down wall right next to it that we go through. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that might change based on the upgrades that you choose, um, which I think is the next thing. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. Um, yeah. So we have picked where your lair is. We picked your hunting grounds. Um, we get to choose a special ability. Um, so, if you click the plus there, um, you can see any special ability with the letter C beside it um, is is there, but um, it's also in the book. Um, so these are different than um, than upgrades. This is like kind of a cool thing that only you guys can do. Um, so, um, for example, one the first one in the book there is Chosen. Each PC may add one, a plus one action rating to a tune, study, or sway up to a max of three. Um, okay. Um, each player may choose the action they prefer. You don't have to choose the same one. Um... If you take this ability during initial character and crew creation, it supersedes the normal starting rating for an action rating. Actually, sorry, that is right. You can't have an ability higher than two die unless you take this. If you want to okay. have three in a tune study or sway, you have to take this. Okay, um, I'm good. I've, I've got two in a couple of things. All right, good. Yeah. No worries. Um, to do... Um, I mean, there's anointed. You gain plus one to resistant rolls against supernatural threats. Um, I should point out, especially because you are going to be hanging out with ghosts. Um, all ghosts have like a supernatural aura of fear around them. Um, I'm going to play with that a bit. And I'm just going to say that they have an aura that's going to make you feel the way they feel. And so okay. it might be lethargy, apathy. It might be um, rage. Um, I'm going to play with that a bit. Um, just because I think it's a little scarier that way. Um, they might be fear, but um, but yes. Um, basically, if you see a spirit and you are not particular, if I feel that you're not particularly well versed in like hanging out with spirits, um, I'm gonna make you roll a resistance roll 
to see if something bad happens just because of that. Um, and then over time, as you interact with ghosts more, I'll make you do that less. But, but spirits, um, as much as like they are a thing in this world, they're very common. You have definitely seen one in your life. Um, your characters have definitely seen a ghost before. Um, they are not super common and they are absolutely terrifying. Um, like what they can do to hurt you is, is, is awful and you can't fight them normally. Um, being a cult, you probably have abilities to interact with ghosts and stuff, and we can talk about that, but um, yeah, ghosts are not to be taken lightly, even though they are kind of everywhere. Um, Ethan, you have the book in front of you, right? Yeah. Are you looking at the cult chosen abilities? Page 110 in the core rulebook. So, uh, basically, I've got like there's the book there, but there was also like a you know the cheat sheet option. That, oh that yes, came yes. Out, which Absolutely. I found that one has been super nice for this first session because it's like we're picking a crew. All right, here's six pages. You can just go that way. Okay. Um, so like, I feel like if I'm min maxing the game, I would probably go for Anointed because it's like oh like obviously we're picking cult and like you know there's there's been enough ghost and spirit talk so far that it's like well maybe we should be kind of like set up for this but um at the same time i don't know if my character would necessarily have that and if that would be something that they're going to struggle with and kind of push in for so um i mean it's funny there's, there's like there's like the one sealed in blood where it's like each human sacrifice yields in minus three stress and it's like yeah. that sounds really mm. awful and like, kind of <laughs> yeah. like interesting of like do we just put that on us of going hey if you get really stressed out we just have to start killing people actually no so um <laughs> yeah. a ritual in this game um is a very powerful tool in your arsenal um it's something that we kind of make up like it's it's not there's there's rules for rituals and what they can do but um basically you kind of tell me what you want to have happen like you want to perform a ritual that will set that will like cause an earthquake to cause white crown to collapse i'm gonna set a huge clock on it and make it incredibly difficult to do but you can do that with a ritual but every time you perform the ritual or make an action against it you take stress because dealing with the uh, the uh, the occult in that manner is like incredibly hard oh, on the body. Okay, I was reading it as <laughs> you lose three stress when you sacrifice a human as a ritual. What you're saying is that it's That's a ritual is three less stress to perform. Yes. Um, if yeah, you and, are and sacrificing humans, I've never. I done thought a the ritual same thing. I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. Join our no, team. It'll um, be great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better already. <laughs> um, I will say this. Um, killing people will always bring, um, unless you have an ability that incidentally only assassins get, um, the, the, the spirit wardens will show up um, anytime you kill someone. But again, when you level up um, your crew, like um, XP, you can pick the veteran special ability and upgrade that um, if you want, just to keep in mind. But you right now, if you kill someone in your lair, the the spirit wardens will find you. Okay, that so I look into these. I like I like bound in darkness, and I think chosen fits very well with our libraryness. Oh, that's a good point. I kind of like bound in darkness too. I didn't read that one, but that's yeah. Cool. Bound in darkness you, is cool. I just like you guys have like a connection that like travels across like the entire city. So you can like help each other connection. without being in the same district. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that actually like is kind of interesting I, because actually bound in darkness means that you guys are connected in a way that goes beyond like the natural. Oh yeah. Like you guys have like telepathy with each other, mm -hmm. which or, is kind of an or interesting we've got thing. A ghosty team member that just zip zaps around is like, Oh yeah, this guy said this thing. Let's go. Hey Casper, how you doing today? I was I was thinking more like Ghost Dad <laughs> from the movie Ghost Dad, with Bill Cosby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you 
Remember when he reached right. through the telephone to strangle the dude? I That's do. That was that movie. was. They, no, I guess not. No, I liked it at the time, but I didn't know. I didn't know who Debel Cosby was as a man. Yeah. There's a lot, <laughs> dude. There's a lot of real creepy shit. If you go back and you look at it. Uh, you guys ever see that episode of the Cosby Show where he's like talking about his special barbecue sauce that gets people in the mood and then they fall asleep? It's like, ooh, oh, Bill I Cosby. Have not. I... I'll All find right, a guys. video clip and send it to you guys. Fair, thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking. Um, sorry, I, so I, I'm getting kind of got. <laughs> That's okay. Um, we're kind of between Chosen and Bound in Darkness. I like chosen, anointed, bounded darkness. I'm also looking at Zilla Tree a little, just as yeah. Those are um, all so that I think are fine for starting. Yeah, as a cult, you guys, by the way, do have cohort cohorts. You have a gang of adepts, which means that you, as a cult, already have people who um, believe in what you believe in. Um, maybe even more than you do. Um, <laughs> more than me. <laughs> yep. Um, so like, yeah, like zealotry would pay off now because you already have cohorts. Um, cause your cohorts have abandoned the reason to devote themselves to the cult. They will undertake any service, no matter how dangerous or strange they gain plus one rolls against enemies of the faith. Oh, we got a bunch of weirdos that... we can send to their deaths. <laughs> well, at, like, that's the thing you can, you can have cohorts join you on scores, not the first score. Cause you guys haven't actually yeah formed yet but you can have them join you on scores you can send them off to do downtime actions um or acquire assets things like that that like so that you don't have to spend your time or your money doing it you they can do it for you um and there's a way to roll that um but um as a tier zero crew these are not particularly skilled people and so they're rolling your tier value which is zero die which means you roll <laughs> two die and take the lowest okay um, to see if they succeed. So it, it's it's one of those things where like that plus one could make a difference if you plan on using your adepts a lot. Um, just so that you know what that is. But um, I wouldn't say Glory Incarnate really makes sense for you guys. Yeah, no, because we don't those, have those like Those four were the only ones guy. I thought that made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say, um, let's do a vote here just so that we're not stuck here all night. Um, hand or... Um, who, um, say I, if you're <laughs> down for Bound in Darkness. Oh, yeah. All right, it's just me. Okay. Right. You only get one vote? <laughs> no, you can vote for each of them. It's just kind of a, like, we'll, we'll see how the three of you are feeling. So, Bound in Darkness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be okay with that. Okay. Uh, Chosen. That's the one that gives you plus one rating, uh, to a few different options. Oh, yeah. I like that. So we got two. That was the um, oh, sorry, CJ. Yeah. Okay, so we got three for that one too. Though we had a tentative VA for Bound of Darkness. So so far, cho uh, chosen seems to be winning. Um, and then Zealotry. I think Zealotry will be good, but maybe as our next ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like once our dudes have like the one die, turning that into two instead of turning like <laughs> shitty into one. I think would probably be mechanically better. And like, I think our guys right now are just joining up. I don't think they really believe yet. That's fair. What did uh, we maybe... think about anointed though? Oh, right. Anointed. Um, you get resistance rolls against supernatural resistance. threats. Resistance. Oh, and you also get, um, get plus... healing. Yeah. You get additional healing against supernatural harm. Hmm. Oh, what is that? Gonna... Supernatural harm. Um, so if a spirit touches you, you um, um, you don't get hurt the way that you would like if someone stabbed you. You get what's called spirit burn. Um, so basically, it's like they can interact with your physical body the same as they can interact with you. But what they can do is they could burn your soul, um, with their hands. Um, some ghosts can manifest and hurt you physically as well, but. Um, more likely, they're they're basically eating your life force, um, and you will take harm from that. But mm -hmm. it's different than physical. All right. 
Well, if I had to choose just one, I would go with Chosen. What do you two think? Yeah, I think that's good. I think that makes the most sense for our starting situation. And okay. like we can like as we progress, we get more of these, right? Yes, yeah. And you can get okay. them from other playbooks yeah. as well. So it's worthwhile when you start to get closer to leveling up to look at all of the playbooks. Um, okay. I'll say that. Um, I think I think Chosen probably makes the most sense for where like how we're starting at. Okay, so um, you might as well do it right now. Go to your character sheet and add plus one action rating to either Attune, Study, or Sway. And it does not have to be the same for all of you. Um, so you can choose one of those three each. And you can push that ability up to a max of three. <clears throat> While you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the upgrades that you have. <clears throat> so you guys have two um, free upgrades because you're a cult. Uh, you have a cohort one um, of adepts, and I'll quickly edit that so that it makes sense. Um, but basically, you have one or two people um, that have been recruited into your cult already, um, and you can send them off to do tasks. You can bring them with you on scores. You cannot bring them with you on scores explicitly, but then do a flashback where you had them do a task for you so that that's how you narratively get around stuff um they can also assist you in stuff um but when they do they roll to see if they hurt or help you um as opposed to when you assist each other where you just take stress and you automatically help um yeah um and then you also have training resolve um so when you go to train during downtime which is, uh, we will get into that when we get to downtime. Um, but when you go to train during downtime, you earn two XP instead of one when you go to train um, your resolve. And what that means is if you look on your character sheet, um, those little things I told you not to check at them, those like those yep. uh, one, two, three, four, five, six boxes above beside the word resolve. Mm. Um, when you make a desperate action, um, like, so if I set the risk at desperate and you decide to make the roll anyways, regardless of how, whether you succeed or not, you'll mark an XP, um, okay. in the corresponding row. So if it's a desperate finesse roll, you would mark prowess. If it's a desperate command roll, it would be resolved. Okay. Um, and then you can also, as a downtime activity train, which means that you would mark another XP. Um, oh, and that's but how if you it's resolve, I get double. You you get two. Um, so then cool. it becomes like a lot more worthwhile to train. Um, yeah. Um, so that's what it does. And you got that for free. Um, sorry, crew upgrades. And once we fill okay. that up, what do we, we get a new dot in one of the things? Exactly. Perfect. Um, okay. the other, the other thing you can do is you can train your, um, your playbook as well. Um, so, um, and at the end of, um, at the end of sessions, we also go over those, um, XP markers. Um, you know, like, did you address the challenge with stealth or evasion, express your beliefs, blah, 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 blah. And we mark that off either in your playbook which is the word one besides special abilities and so that's how you gain special abilities is you have to fill that up and that one has more it's um eight i think yeah so eight xp will give you a special ability six xp towards either insight prowess or resolve will give you a pip in one of the skills underneath that if that makes any sense okay yeah so that's how you guys level up um, and you guys will not level up at the same rate um, because this game is not meant to be balanced that way. Um, but you guys also get to pick um, crew upgrades. So you get two additional upgrades to your new crew. So you, you have the two that you got from the cult, which I just went over, but you also get to pick two more. And so if you go to the upgrades tab and click the plus, any that don't have a letter beside it, you can pick. And any with the C beside it, you can pick. Um, you said two additional. The only one, 
Yes, and one of them can be... I just want to double check cohorts because I think cohorts are worth it. Um, yeah, so you have to spend two upgrades to buy a co another cohort. Um, so a cohort can be either be a gang of people or it can be an expert. Um, an expert is just they're they're good at something and they get additional dice to do that thing. Um, and they're just generally more useful than a gang, but you don't have to. Know. Um, um, yeah. Um, is there any upgrades that you guys can see that you have questions about? Like I know it's a lot to look through. Uh, no questions yet. Okay. Um, a couple I'll point out for you guys that I think might be more useful than others. Um, or that might be a little bit weird. Um, secure layer. Um, so you can buy that twice. Um, but if you spend one point in it, um, your layer is moderately more secure, which means that it probably has a door. Um, it's not easy to get into. Um, and then that door might even lock. Um, you can... Um, quarters uh, means that you guys can live in your lair. If you don't have the quarters, that means that your characters live elsewhere. Um, which means that it's not always being watched by someone. Um, and I will say that, like, while well, you can say that your character spent the night there... Um, I'm going to use that as a consequence because you don't have quarters. And so I might actually give you harm because you're not well rested. Um, like as a consequence to a role that you make at some point. Um, because narratively speaking, like otherwise it wouldn't matter if you, if that upgrade wouldn't have any value. Yeah. Um, vault. You guys think we live in this library? It's so tough. I don't really know what the story is of how we get out of jail and all of that right yeah that i mean we'll CJ. we'll figure that out that's fair i mean yeah and like this can change in the moment but it's just worthwhile kind of going over so that when we start like once we do this score you guys can just go right into being a cult and doing your culty stuff oh we should have a workshop i think if it, it, yeah. it says like a small library of books documents maps and i'm like we've already talked think, about it being yeah. that um, actually, a workshop sense? is your lair has a workshop appointed for tools for tinkering and alchemy, as well as small library of book and documents and maps. Well, um, but I, but I having a workshop that. will <laughs> what, if because we have a leech in the party, it's worthwhile noting. Um, so a leech or anyone with a tinker skill, um, or anyone who cares to tinker, even if you don't have the skill, um, you can craft items. A workshop will increase the quality of the items that you make. Um, without a workshop, you would make crappy versions of things. All right. Or you would have, a, or you'd have a really hard time making it because you don't have access to the tools. But now you do if you pick the workshop. Um, so I'm gonna click that. Um, what the vault does um, when you guys earn coin, you personally can carry up to four coin on your person. Um, but it means that you're holding on to it, um, which means that people can take it from you. Um, and that is a consequence that I will leverage against you sometimes, if it makes sense. Okay. If you put it in the vault, it's safe. Um, I, I should probably explain what coin is. Um, coin is a nebulous kind of amount of money. What it really means is that it's uh, it's just a lot of money. It's like a week's worth of wages um, okay. is, kind of, is how they describe it. Um, so for you guys walking around and you want to go buy dinner, that doesn't cost a coin. You can just say you went out for dinner, okay? Um, and I'm not going to fight you on it. But if you want to acquire an asset... Um, that's going to be hard to find or it would be expensive, then it, then I'm going to say it costs a coin or two coins even. Like, like it, it would cost a lot of money. Um, you can also spend coin to, um, to like basically move up in tier, um, which would represent like your layer becoming nicer and like you are recruiting more people through your gang or your cohorts. Um, 
You can also use it to buy additional downtime actions or to improve the results of rolls for downtime actions. Um, so um, if you have harm, you can go see a physiker um, who's a doctor that they'll go and help you with whatever problem you're having. Um, but if they don't roll very well, you can spend coin to increase the amount of oh, healing right. that you get. Um, because sometimes you don't want to spend both of your downtime actions healing. Um, or you might have to spend both your downtime actions healing and boost it in order to get all of your stuff fixed. Like, you know, that's a thing. Um, but Vault, what it does is it takes the coin... Um, you can keep it safely, um, so unless, like, a really high-tier faction comes in and moves against you, um, which I probably wouldn't do unless you're at war um, with someone, um, that money is secure. You guys don't even have access to it without talking about it with the other two people. But if you're getting on your person, um, you may lose it in a number of ways. Um carriage house is if you wanted to have um a carriage with some goats dude um i want a carriage pulled by two screaming goats <laughs> yes they're called school vanny matterhorns nice um they're giant goats and they scream and climb mountains that's what they're good good at so, so that's what if i we want have two upgrades i feel like we should do one strategic and one thematic right yeah. Um, and then it's worthwhile looking at the cult specific upgrades as well. Um, I think the cult rigging sounds really cool. It says here I can carry a profane book of curses and a demon's hand for zero load. Like, I, I really want to make sure that, you know, I don't go into this and blow my load right away. Like, I want to make sure that I've got enough available. So I think having both the demon's hand uh, to help with maintaining my load and a profane, I can, a profane book of curses that I can mutter uh, once the demon hand finally uh, <clears throat> blows the load. What are we talking about? What's going on here? Sorry, what are you talking about? I don't see this at all. This is cult rigging. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. What oh, the hell is this guy okay. talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah, so... Um, all of the crews have like a special rigging. It basically just means that um, you guys have a method of like, like without being obvious, you have a way of like hiding um, occult items on your person. Um, too lo like two load worth. Um, okay. And so I can like keister this demon hand. Yeah. And we'll get into it when we get into the score, but um, items in this game, you don't pick... Um, what your items are until you you need them in the score. Okay. Um, so you don't have to worry about what you have on your person, but you pick a load. Um, and so you either pick light load, which means you're walking around with like a few things on you um, up to three load. Um, and those items um, are well hidden on your person. And, and like, unless someone's frisking you down or like actively searching you, they won't see that you have it. Whereas like a regular load... Um, you look like you might be um, suspicious um, in certain circumstances. Um, and then a heavy load, it looks like you're uh, like actively like walking around with a gun. Okay. Um, like, like you're a threat and everyone knows it. Like that, that's... Um, so like you kind of pick your load before the score and then as things go out, you can pick the... But with the cult rigging, you can pick two additional items as long as they're kind of a cult arcane implements or documents or things like that um okay so, so look at all this stuff what oh, sorry. okay look oh, at that, all this stuff i think I was gonna say. oh i think the workshop makes sense and i think the quality documents make sense um uh, the cult rigging it just has a bunch of funny words in it so i'm not super into it uh and maybe the ritual sanctum in lair might be good. I was wondering with that one, because it says this counts as a sacred and arcane workshop for occult practices and rituals. And so is this like 
the other workshop is more tinkering and alchemy and this one is more occult or is a workshop yes. a workshop yes uh so um when you go to do a ritual basically how this works is it, it becomes a long-term project you have to get all of your shit together for it um to do the ritual right because you don't just have like eye of newt in a jar sitting on your desk unless you take this and then you do Right, like the idea is like you you would skip a lot of steps for the long term rituals. So if you guys plan on doing a lot of rituals, occult rituals, it's a really good one to have. Um, and I will say it's worthwhile to look at what rituals do. So I'm gonna quickly find that. Um, so I don't just. Um. A ritual. Okay, I gotta look at the index. Um, but basically, a ritual is is something that you do. Um, that's going to have like an occult effect. And so it could be um, something as simple as you open up the ghost field inside the city and it allows more ghosts to come through or you create what's called a spirit well, um, which is where like spirits can come and go as they please. Um, it's like cheers for you... ghosts. Yeah, exactly. Um, Sorry guys, this one's not in the little starter bit guide, so I gotta go. Uh, That's all right. Um, I don't know, CJ. What are you thinking? Are you leaning on anything? Uh... Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm really quick. I'm gonna inter um, interrupt. Um, rituals also would give you access to things like if you wanted to have ghost powers or demon powers, or you wanted to become a sorcerer. Oh, yeah, um, I like those. Um, like, so, like, if you wanted to, say, add the ability to, like, throw fire at people at will, um, you can perform a ritual. Now, I'm not going to make it easy on you, but it would be slightly easier if you had that specific upgrade. Um, but you don't need it to do rituals, and rituals tend to be a character-specific thing, but as a cult, um, but a ritual ultimately comes down to, it's just a weird thing that you guys want to do that is just kind of a culty. Um, and you guys are welcome to pitch whatever you want. That sorry, I just thought it was important to to tell you what that was. CJ, what do you think of uh, of all these upgrades? What, anything jumping out at you? The cult upgrade upgrades. I wasn't particularly looking at any of them because we're not too established in what we're doing. I'm not. Yeah. None of them are particular. Um, I certainly like a workshop given uh, my class. Um, I. I like the idea of quarters or a secure layer just so we have little, just so the base itself is out. I do like transportation and screaming goats. <laughs> that, 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 that's my thought is uh, having a secure other... layer and transportation. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't say hidden layer yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, not say. hidden, but I uh, think secure, secure is probably, yeah. Yeah. But quarters is also just because I don't know if any of us are in in any of our background. Well, Athletes. and like quarters would give an amount of secureness, right? Yeah. Because you're there yeah. at least. Or, or um, someone it, is. It, well, and it would also allow your gang to live there. Because right now, otherwise, they don't live with you. Like they I would think just it's be really off the city important side. for a cult to get people to live not where they usually live. I think that's something that most cults do. So I think you're that, right. Yeah. So I think, I think quarters and I like, I like the idea of workshop, especially with like the, you know, tinker ability that you have. That sounds yeah. like something that can come out from there. That sounds great. I'm, I'm on board. So, okay. Here we go. Quarters and workshop. I love it. Um, Okay, and yeah, and, and so we have our crew as created as we're going to for today. There's another aspect where we go through the factions list and you have a um, plus or minus rating with them. Um, um, we're going to go through that after the first score um, because okay. I want to give you guys an opportunity to meet some people. Um, if you guys are okay, it's a little late actually, um, but we should probably take a short break, like a five, 10 minute break for bathrooms, get a Dr. Pepper, whatever you need to do. 
And then um, I'm going to introduce you guys to Iron Hook Prison when we come back. Fuck yeah. Sounds good to me. All right, listeners, we're back. Um, we're going to kind of dive right in with a little bit of Blades in the Dark here. Um, so like I said, it's um, it's it's their equivalent to fall here in Dust Ball right now. Um, this would be about a week before we meet the players. Um, there's a shop in Six Towers, um, surrounded by a bunch of dilapidated buildings, um, that were destroyed in some sort of conflict, um, stands one store, um, right at the corner of a street, um, on the sign outside, hand-painted, in sloppy and almost hard, um, difficult to read and a little bit edgy um, hand-painted writing um, it says sawtooth surgeries and sundry um, you see as the camera kind of moves in through the window you see a man um, standing beside an operating table there's nobody on um, he's just standing in a room by himself he um, goes over towards the shelf and he grabs a canister labeled ether and he cranks open a valve and he just takes a really big huff. And then you hear the shattering of some glass. The man steps out of the room. You hear the sounds of conflict and a little bit of, um, like it's almost like a, like a fight ensues. And then you see him come back in. Um, and he's wearing like a, like a leather apron and underneath he's wearing like a fine white shirt. Um, but the fine white shirt and the apron are now covered in blood. Um, and he takes another hit. Um, we go to Dunslow. In Dunslow, it's cold, it's desolate, it's empty. Um, you see some farmers, um, well, eel farmers. They're actually more like fishermen um, that are feeding um, what look like corpses um, to a pond. And you just see like slithering masses of eels um, just consume it and it just goes under the water and disappears and watching this scene is a man named Bay Helker who is sitting in a prison across from him is the man that we saw earlier um, uh, Sawtooth himself um, he's introduced himself to you you've been in prison for two days um, there Bay um and this man is uncomfortable, jittery. And you know how you would often describe a situation that is confining and uncomfortable as being like a prison? Yeah. That is how close you are to this man. He's less than two feet away from you as he is clearly going through with, and you hear him muttering something along the lines of like, those fucking kids, man. Who gives a shit about those fucking kids? And he's been muttering and yelling, not at you, but just kind of to the world for a couple nights. What do you do? Um, well, not the most comfortable of situations. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think in, in, in this spot, there's a bit of um, just kind of huddling a bit to myself, uh, moving myself into as much of the corner as I can to, to kind of keep a bit of distance. Um, and I guess at the same time, um, if so, I oh, could talk a bit of, um, yeah, so uh, not much of an ether man. My, myself, uh, I can say I, I find myself a little more to the, the drink, which has helped me get along this far, but, uh, you know, not really finding a lot of answers, not really being able to do very much and you know through all the effort i still find myself here uh not my fault i would say i i was set up which is really great what about you were were you set up or uh yeah were you set up um so he's laying on the bed and he's been kind of twitching but as you talk to him his legs kind of shoot up and they fall over to the side of the bed and he sits up and as he does, he's like uncomfortably close to your face because your beds, again, are only like two feet apart to begin with. But he's leaning forward and he's like, 
right in your face and he's like you know I, what I don't know if I would say I was set up but um, I'm a doctor I'm a physicer um, and you know what they do, they say that um, we have all the good stuff well I freaking work out of six towers I got nothing fucking broke as shit and anyways these kids they kept coming and they kept trying to take my stuff they take my tools they take my drugs they took my fucking ether and I just had enough and I'm just I'm lucky that the blue coats came before the spirit ordinance, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Nobody's here because it's their fault. This is a fucked up place. And as for your drink, don't ever drink again. It's awful for your liver. Do the ether. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the best fucking thing in the world. It's like being in another world. <laughs> and. Well, we can end the scene there unless you want to say anything else to him. No, I'm good at this point. I don't I don't know <laughs> if they would really have a lot to, to talk back to this um, interesting gentleman. Yes. Uh, Sawtooth the Physiker. Um, so we um, we kind of go back and it's it's about three days before that conversation took place. Um, we see a young woman. Um, she's a Taikorosi woman. Um, she's walking along the docks, um, carrying a crate. Um, you see her walk up to um, a ship, and then you can tell by looking at the ship that this is um, clearly a Leviathan Hunter's frigate. Um, it's it's a massive ship. Um, we kind of zoom out, and you can see that there's like you know probably about forty or fifty people kind of working and loading up this ship with goods. Um, and as they do, um, you see that a couple of the people around her, uh, they drop the crates and one of them pulls out like a Molotov cocktail and throws it at the back of the ship. And we fast forward, um, we see, um, CJ is, do you know if your character is going to be a man or a woman? Woman. Okay, fair enough. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I, like, either way, Iron Hook is not divided by gender. But, um, yes. Um, so, yeah, we see a female character. Um, the, um, we see CJ's character. Um, and across from her is this woman. And she just looks dour, depressed, confused, and scared. Um, she's, a, again, a Taikorosi woman. Um She's wearing the same uniform you are, which is one of those black and white striped prison jumpsuits. Um, you all are wearing those currently. Um, but she just looks absolutely uncomfortable and terrified. Um, and it's like very obvious with her because her tail is waving behind her frantically. Um, she's got like a long feline tail um, but at the end, it kind of splays out into like, um, like a spade made out of bone. Um, but yes, you are in the cell with this woman and, um, you've heard her for the last, um, I'll, I'll say you've been in prison for five days. Um, at this point, you've heard her cry almost every night she's been here. Um, do you interact with her at all? Uh, I think my character is the reason she's concerned because most of the time all this other woman in this cell is doing is muttering to herself, having found some sharp piece of rock and scribbling on the sides of the wall, muttering to herself some weird notes or stuff like, uh, I had this and if, if I could get my hands on that. She's, all, she's already planning her escape, but it's all coming out as weird, crazy mumbo-jumbo as, she, as she's planning her next project. So we can say that it, it's, um, it's early, early morning. Now, obviously, it's dustfall. It's always night here, except for the two and a half minutes of brief sunlight, if you can call it that, that we catch uh, to the east and the west. Um, at the marking the beginning and end of each day 
But this is before um, the first of the two Dimmer Sisters arrives. That's what they call the sunrise and the sunset, are the Dimmer Sisters. Um, she has not slept tonight at all. She's been crying, and you have been apathetic to her feelings um, yet again. And it's just an interesting scene to see uh, your cold, cold nature. Um, and last but not least, we go to Ludwig in his cell. And sitting across from you is an older man. Um, he's maybe about like 75, maybe even 80 years old. Um, you don't know, you do know, sorry, you do know this guy's name. Um, his name is Tarble. You know for a fact that he is the leader of a gang called the Bill Hooks. The, the what? The Bill Hooks. Bill Hooks, okay. Yes. Um, and, and he has attempted to goad you for the last um, probably two weeks since you've been pushed into a cell with him. Um, and your cell is a little bit bigger than the others. The other ones are maybe, if they're lucky, like five feet across. Um, yours is, is about twice as big. It's a 10-foot cell. There's quite a bit of distance between your two beds. Um, there's even a desk and a small shelves of libraries on his side of the room. Um, or a small shelf with some books and stuff on it. Sure. Um, the other thing you notice is that he openly carries a weapon at all times, which is a bill hook. Like a, like one of those like hooks that you would use to hang up a pig in a slaughterhouse. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, and he sits there and... Um, this morning, um, you see him, you can hear him sharpening it on a whetstone, and it's just that shh, shh sound. Yeah. And and he turns to you and he says, you know, boy, you've been walking these streets, I've heard, and um, I think it's worthwhile to know that you don't want to stay here much. Hey, you of course not. Right? Why, <laughs> why would I want to stay in this place? This place is I'm a, saying... It's a, shithole <laughs> yeah, you have guy. three days if you what? can escape in the next three days you might survive survive what 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 are you talking about don't worry about it just find your way out or don't and he just goes back to sharpening his bill hook what the hell what the hell does that mean what the hell does that mean oh. if you bug him enough he'll tell you to shut up but Otherwise, yeah, he just kind of ignores you. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it's probably a couple hours after these three conversations or life conversations happen, um, the cells open. And the three of you make your way down to the dining hall. Um, and you find yourself sitting together. Um... Do you think that the three of you have spoken before formed any kind of rapport at this point? Um, some of you have been in prison longer than others. I don't, I don't know, man. Know um, if she's approached anyone, but she's definitely clocking anyone like unusual or potentially youthful. Okay. I assume to date, my guy's the... probably fairly unusual. Non yeah. Nondescript, strange thing about your body. Um, no, actually, oh, yeah, go ahead. You go. Oh, I was going to say, to make this easier, actually, I'm going to say that you guys have been on a work gang together. Okay. So the three of you uh, um, have been all pressed together to um, you clean the washrooms. Great. So there's Love eight it. there's eight washrooms in this prison. Um, and you are responsible for cleaning all eight of them before you are allowed to go back before you're sent to, for dinner and then back to yourself for the day. Um, there is an hour during the day where you have time outside in the yard at the center of the prison. So I'm like covered in shit. 
Oh boy. Oh yeah. I mean, that's also where the showers are. So maybe you wash after each one. I don't know. Nah. Who's got time for that? I gotta get my food before time runs out. I'm already at the back of the line because I gotta do this work before I can get my food. So this dude's this dude's like stinky, and uh, he's like hustling. He gets to the back of the line. He's like, hey, I barely got any beans. I get are there more beans. But uh, you know, I'd sit down at the table with you guys and be like, hey, uh, <laughs> if you guys heard anything weird going on, anything you know, maybe uh. Uh, something, something big happening in the next couple of days here. Uh, anything? Any rumors? I heard some rumors. Nothing on my <laughs> side, and I can tell you, like, I can't. I don't know how much longer I can. I can live in a place like this. This is some of the. I'd say it's the worst conditions I've been in, but it's not the worst. But it could be a heck of a lot better. I'm telling you what. Like, That's uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I got, I got, I got one of the suites, you know, that I'm staying in, and it's, uh, uh it still sucks. Yeah, you know, I mean, be, you know, there's, there's two kinds of prisons. You know, there, there's two kinds of prisons. There's one, like this, where he gestures about, you know, around him. He's like one like this, where you know, you're locked up inside and everything's on the outside, and the other kind where you're locked outside and you can't get into anything. I've lived my whole life in one or the other, and I'm, I'm sick of it. Not, and here, okay. Wait, let me let me get to the point here. There's uh, my um, <laughs> my roommate. Uh, I, I I believe that Article. there is something bad going to happen in the next couple of days here. He said three days to get the hell out of here, and I. Uh, you guys have uh, you guys heard anything? I think I think oh, I think something bad's going to happen. <laughs> oh. And so. I am going to introduce you to the first game mechanic that we have. This is the gathering information say, a section of the score. So you guys are allowed to ask questions. Um, there are some on your um, on your playbook sheet that like might apply specifically to your playbook, but you can ask any question you'd like. The idea is, is that you guys are either going to roll to see if you've already known something or if you're going to find something out over the next three days. Uh, where um, do I find this? Um, at the bottom right on the, the playbook, if you see it. Yeah. It might not be on the... Um, so you would want to look at the actual page um, no, like in the book. Okay, okay um, yeah, I was going to say, I don't see that uh, in here, so but, the book. But ultimately, um, basically... You guys want to find a way to describe to me what you're doing or what you've or your characters have already done to kind of get a vibe check of what's going on, what information you may know, if you've talked to someone, if you've noticed things. Um, and I'm going to tell you. Um, yeah, and then we make a roll to see. So um, examples and questions. You made a tune to the ghost field to see the echoes of recent spirit activity. Have any ghosts been here? How can I find the spirit well that's calling them? What should I have worried about? Or you might use command um, to like basically like um, threaten another prisoner to tell you what he knows what's going on. Um, or you might use hunt to stalk someone or study to just see if you get an idea of what's going on or survey would be a good one for that. Like, like basically you're gonna pick an action that you wanna roll and I'm going to give you information based on how you. So, what is the what is the what's the gang presence here at this prison? Like you, you mentioned, the bill hooks. Um, are, are they I like the? Uh, so I'll give you that one for free. The bill hooks operate like half of their faction is outside the prison, and the other half is inside the prison. Um, there are like, it's very obvious. Most bill hooks walk around; they're armed all the time. And there's more of them than there are prison guards. Oh, jeez. They're armed in prison. Yes, they are armed in the prison. <laughs> um, you also know that if you ever wanted to smuggle something into the prison, you just have to ask Tarval and his friend. Um, but you'll either owe him money or a favor. That's yeah, not the kind of guy you want to owe favors to. Oh. I mean, money is just as dangerous, but... Yeah, can I consort with um with what one of the, the, the members of the Bill Hooks? Absolutely. 
Um, so first, before you roll, describe to me how that looks, like what you're doing. Yeah, um, so in between some of the latrine duty that we were we were doing, um, maybe I um, chatted up a fellow who was um, in the showers while I was I was I was cleaning up that room and um, just kind of asking um, what the deal is around here. You know, I'm 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 fresh meat. I'm I'm new blood. I've been here for for two days, so just kind of asking about uh, you know. What do I need for for protection? You know, what are the rules around this joint? Okay. So I like it, but that does not sound like a consortium. That sounds like a sway. A consort would be more like if you're trying to bribe someone, if you're going to try and party with them. So maybe to change, if you want to roll consort, because that's probably a better skill for you. Um. You're going to bribe them with some alcohol that you managed to find or something like that maybe you share like a like a little like you have like a couple shots of something together sure yeah yeah I'll, I'll, okay yeah i um i snuck in a flask you know i'm, I'm still um I'm, I'm still drinking a bit and i don't know um if we're allowed to just throw that in it, it seems like a pretty lax prison in some ways and i'm pretty strict in others <laughs> so yeah oh definitely definitely it is like that like you know that the guards are corrupt as shit um, and they're lazy and ineffectual. The only thing they're good at is making sure you don't leave. They but they don't, really, they don't really step in when inmates fight. They don't really stop people from exchanging goods and making deals. They'll actively help sometimes if you get the right guard. Um, but yes, um, so yeah, you have this flask. Um, go ahead and make your consort roll. Um, so if you click on your sheet, there, Ethan. Um, you should be able to click the word consort and yeah. it'll roll. Is um, this a, a controlled position? Um, yeah. So for this, because it's gather information, I'm not going to hurt you for not being able to gather information. I'm just not going <laughs> to give you good information. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, no modifier, control position and a standard effect. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat log, and I should be. I got six but, and three. So that means that you so you always pick the highest die. So you have six, which means that you got the best success you could have got, except for maybe a critical. Nice. Um, How so do you get I'm a critical? Gonna tell you some, uh, you roll two sixes if you roll two or more dice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two, two, two. And sorry, um, what was the question you were asking him? I just want to make sure I'm answering the right question. Yeah, so uh, I'm new blood here. I'm looking for information on how the prison is run and uh, what I need for protection. Um, and he's a billhook, so he'll say, yeah, you got to get in good with Darvel, man. Um, honestly, you don't survive here without Darvel. Um, if he wants you dead, he wants you dead. So don't get on his bad side at all. Um, and probably just don't like if you're not gonna be a bill hook, just don't talk to the bill hooks. Like I know I am one, but I don't really give a shit about them. I just try not to die. Um, the guards can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Uh, if they ask you for something, just do it. You'll it'll pay in the end. Um, fuck. Um, there's those fucking weirdos, man. Um, Path of Echoes. Um, I don't know if you know who they are, but they're like this weird fucking cult. Um, they just they keep fucking killing people to see if their ghosts will be the right kind of ghosts. I don't know exactly what's going on there. But um, they're fucking weird, and you shouldn't talk to them. Because if you do, other people aren't going to like you. Uh, and, and frankly, the spirit wardens have been hanging out here a lot. And I don't know what the fuck that's about, but that's so weird. I've been here for years, and uh, I've never seen a spirit warden in here before. I've never seen a spirit warden before. Uh, they're fucking scary as shit, though. Um, so basically, what I'm giving you um, is the bill hooks have a lot of influence here. The prison guards are corruptible, um, but if they ask you for a favor and you don't follow through, they can make your life a living hell. 
Um, spirit wardens have been here recently for some reason, and that's super weird. All right. Well, back at the cafeteria table, so you always got to jump back into that. Um, I'm going to relay that information and kind of talk into, um, you know, hey, um, is it is it Ludes or Luds? Um, Ludes. Ludes. <laughs> Ludes. Ludes. All right. Hey, Ludes, um, you know, talking with, with some of the, 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 the cronies for the bill hooks, you know, I'm, I'm really getting the sense that uh, you got you to gotta maybe push this in you have with, with Tarvel. I don't know how much chatty uh, he is and how much you don't want to do it, but um, kind of getting some bad signs as well with, uh, you know, Path of Echo Echoes and, and, and some kind of more death approaching than usual. No, oh, that's that's uh, a little concerning. Uh, you know, I can uh, let me uh, let me let me see if I can uh, chat up some of these uh, you know <clears throat> dead guys and see if there's any kind of details I can get from them. I got a eh, I got a little thing I can do. Um, so CJ or Adam, who wants to go next? Um, I'd like to have like studied the. I study the prison itself for like just uh like like the structure of it. Absolutely. Like knowing like where is the like weak points or potentially uh like like the infrastructure of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um so yeah, like so um in my mind you're kind of you, whenever you have the opportunity, you're kind of trying, like, checking out different areas, making notes or something like that in a book um, about what you see and what may or may not prove to be an, an escape point. Like, you're looking yeah, for escape, escape points or potentially damage of pl places that could be a distraction or a weak spot. Those kind of things. Okay. Um, yeah, so go ahead and give me that study roll. All right, you did it. Uh, you got a six as nice. well. Nice. Um, so you, you spend a fair amount of time in the washrooms because you guys are on this three-man crew that cleans the washrooms, and you spend at least six or seven hours a day cleaning the washrooms. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yes. <laughs> that's, that's my dream I'm ready. job. I'm ready <laughs> there to are, <laughs> yeah, There are no windows on the first floor. Um, and so um, I do actually have a map of what the prison might look like, and I'll bring it for the next game. Um, I'll have it ready for you guys, but um, basically, the, this is like a circular prison. So there's like a courtyard in the center, mm. um, and it's large, but it's not large enough to um, to fit everyone in. So meals, yard time, and even work shifts are all kind of on different shifts. So you guys are on the early morning shift. Um, you kind of, you get out of your cells and go to your first meal right at, um, like the, the morning hour. Um, and then you'll, as you're doing, you will walk past a group of people going. Um, so what you've noticed in the washrooms is that there is a, about an hour and a half right when you first wake up where it's in heavy use. And then about 20 minutes where everyone goes for dinner and there's not a second crew coming in. Um, and that's true in all of the washrooms that you've been in. Um, the, so you have like a 20 minute window where you could be alone in the washrooms. You've okay. also noticed that um, some of the bill hooks um, will congregate um, you know, on the southeastern wall, out, outer wall. And that seems to be where they're getting goods and stuff in. Now, um, if you've tried to approach them, um, they make it very clear you're not welcome over there. Um, but there, there seems to be like an area where they're like just actively moving goods, like crates of like food and... Um, crates, um, wow. Yeah. Uh, the bill hooks have run of this prison. Like it, it's not a secret at all. Um, okay. The prison guards are here to keep everyone else at bay, and they just kind of let the bill hooks do what they want as long as they don't try to leave. Um, and the bill hooks, why would they? They probably live better here than they do elsewhere. 
Um, so, yeah, like, um, so you, you, you know that there's probably a, like an entrance that they're using that is not like guarded. Um, okay. and I'll give you one more piece of information that will not be as useful as that probably. Um, but all of the second story, um, cells. So there are cells. This is a three story prison. There's probably about, um, 150 cells on each floor. Um, and almost all of them are full, but on the second story, which is where, um, which is where Bay is. Um, and on the third story, which is where, um, sorry, I'm going to mess up your name, but Adam's character, um, L um, Ludes, or Ludwig, um, he's Ludes. on the third story. Yeah. Ludes is on the third story. Bay is on the second story. They have windows. You're on the first story. You don't. Um, but, um, they do have windows. They're barred, but in theory, that might be useful information to you. Is there plumbing? Like, I hope so. Water? We're going to make our job well, a lot harder with that. Of, What's their technological level on plumbing? Yeah. Um, so yes and no. Um, like, are we honey dippers is, or are we like cleaning up like a, like a flush toilet? It's, it's, it's sort of a flush toilet. It's kind of like an outhouse. And so like, um, there's a hole in the ground or whatever. Okay. And, but, in but you basically, your job is to take boiling water and pour it down the toilets to clear that out. Cause there okay. is so there's like, so it's like ancient growth. We, we are yeah. not Shawshanking our way out of this prison. I can tell <laughs> oh, you yeah. right now. Yeah. No, no way. No way. I just, I was just curious, like. How gross is my job? So like, yes, I'm covered in shit all the time. Okay. No, you're not in the, you're not in there down there. You just, you have to take boiling water and pour it down the toilets a couple times a day. Um, maybe I you am, know. you know. Oh, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe you're into it, but um, well, maybe, maybe, I, I, maybe I find some good stuff in there. Well. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I, oh, I have a question about my ability because that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, how? What does it take? Because my ghost ward ability, um, you know how to wreck an area with arcane substances and methods. So it's either an anthema or facing spirit. What do I have to do for that? Do um, I need special stuff? Um. So, you would need, and and this is something that like when we go to do the score. Um you could have access to um but i'm gonna make you narratively describe how you got into the prison um but we don't have to worry about that right now but basically you would need arcane implements of some kind and specifically you would be rolling wreck um not a tune for that yeah. role um because you are wrecking an area mm -hmm. um um and so, like, yeah, like, that can look like whatever, but you would probably need arcane implements, um, depending on how large of an area, I might say that you need demolition tools, um, which by itself is to load, by the way. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like, you would probably need either demolition tools or and arcane implements or just arcane implements, depending on how big of a problem you want to cause. Yeah. Also depends in the moment how you describe it, like it, like of what's going on and stuff like that too. Um, so like, um, you might be fine with just like a band, like some of the stuff on your bandolier, right? Um, you also have fine wrecking tools as like your item there, so that could be what you use. I'd be fine with that too. Like it's just, you would need an item of some kind. Like I'm not like you can't just touch it with your bare hands and walls explode yeah. and just come out, but. Um, but that's, that's, that's good to know. Actually, I forgot that you took those word. That's, that's going to be interesting. Um, and then last but not least, we have loots. All right. So <clears throat> I got this thing where I can, I guess, talk to ghosts, which is pretty cool. This a tune skill. Well, I should say that, um, there's a slide ability that allows you to talk to ghosts like they're people. Um, ghosts are not people. 
And so um, I'm not saying you can't do it, um, but the information you get might be kind of weird. Oh, dude, I'm, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think uh, after after hearing what's going on with everybody else, I want to try to talk to Ghost. Uh, uh, what do I, how do I, uh, hmm. Um, so you can definitely wanna, make an I, attune roll. Yeah, like, yeah. like that would be kind of what you use. So what I want to do, uh, am I risky or controlled or desperate or what? Um, it, it's a gather information roll. Um, it's just easier to do it this way than doing it the other way because you can just roll the skill. It doesn't matter. I, I, you cannot. Oh, okay, that doesn't, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you got a mixed success on that one. Um, and the way I'm going to rule that is that you're going to get one useful piece of information and one weird piece of information that you may or may not be able to decipher. Okay. Uh, if you, if you're up to that challenge, I am too. So, uh, basically I want to try to talk to whatever ghosts that I can and see if I can find out, uh, if there's any, like, a person that died in a, a daring escape attempt that may have... Uh, left behind some kind of equipment that could be useful for uh, CJ. What's your character's name? Uh, I've decided Myri Skelkalon. Myri. 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 Like okay. Myri. Um, see. Irie. Myri. Sorry. Go ahead. Myri. 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 I'm not thinking about it. It's, it's, it's one of those weird things where the E could be silent. But I'm going to go with Myri. 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 Yes. M Y R E. Myri. Okay. I was going to see how long we can go back and forth saying Myri. Myri. <laughs> Myri. Or Myri. Myri. If I say it enough times, I'll remember it forever. Uh, it's a lot of times I got to say it because, man, my memory is bad. So, okay. Myri. Um, Myri. All right, so I'm going to see if I can find a ghost that died in some sort of daring escape attempt uh, that may possibly have the uh, inside track on where I can get some gear that Myri could possibly use to do her uh, wreckage that uh, she has expressed to us at the uh, shit scooping jam. All right. Um. Yeah, so you got the mixed success. So I'm going to say... Um, you, and maybe just take a second to describe, like, where you are and what it looks like when you summon a ghost. So, um, what I want to do is, like, I want to, you know, on my, uh, my rounds going from shitter to shitter, uh, find the most fucked up looking area. Something that looks like maybe somebody tried to bust out through it. Um, you know, any kind of thing that looks like it's been, like, blasted or picked apart. Anything that in a video game would look like I should put a bomb there. You know, that kind of thing. And, uh... Once I find something like that, uh, my dude's gonna kind of just uh, you know, shake it out and uh, kind of like like pump himself up. You know, he, he takes a whole bunch of deep breaths. It pulls and holds his breath until he's like he like like all the all the veins on his like face and neck start to stand up, and he like starts to you know all of his blood's rushing to his face, and he looks like he's gonna black out. And then like just before he blacks out from holding his breath too much, like he starts to see ghosts, and uh, kind of in that exhalation from. <sighs> Do you know where I can find any kind of gear to blow up a wall? <sighs> and. Uh, kind yeah. of black out just a little bit just a little bit you know like that thing where you stand up too quick and you're like dizzy and you're like whoa going down that kind of thing okay so while you're kind of having that moment just because you're interacting with a ghost so i want to make this narratively important um you have that moment where like you're kind of looking at the ground and you're feeling dizzy and your head's swelling and you got a headache and that headache just gets worse and you feel frustrated uh pissed off and impotent um, and it's like through you, like you simultaneously feel angry and just that sinking gut feeling of like, you weren't good enough. And you kind of hear a voice and it's speaking to you 
um, but it's not making sense. Like the words aren't making sense, but you get images of your head of you punching um, the wall of like your um, your cell, but it's not your cell because your cell is much nicer than this one. Uh, you just have this moment where like your hand is like you can feel the pain in your hand. It's bloody. And, um, and then you get a moment where you realize like these bars aren't even that hard to take out. I get a crowbar. I could just pry this off the wall. Who the fuck built it? Oh my God. It's so shitty in here. It's so shitty. It's, it's so shitty. I hate and it's then me. you feel yourself as you're talking to Tarble, begging him for a crowbar anything that you could use to leverage out the window, but you won't tell him why, of course. But you feel him choke you to death. Oh, God. And before he does, he says, no good deed goes unpunished. And you're back to yourself, and you're starting to gain your breath, and you feel yourself again. So, every time, every time I'm going to do this, my dude blacks out. Black, like, uh, you, you ever do that thing when you were a kid where, like, uh, you know, you, 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 like, take all those deep breaths and then, like, one of your buddies pushes against your chest until you black out? I didn't, but no? other kids at the school did. No? <laughs> okay. It's like that. So, you know, like, you, you black out and you're out for, like, I don't know, maybe it's probably, like, two, three seconds. But, like, the you experience... By the way, everybody at home, try this. It's great. Uh, but you experience don't, don't. these vivid, vivid hallucinations while your brain is deprived of oxygen. And, uh, like, it's, uh... I remember, I remember one time I did that, and like I had this whole fucking hallucination where I uh, got like I, I was like robbing, not robbing, but like uh, burgling, stealing stuff from shoplifting from like a like a like a Walgreens, and then like running away and getting home, and my mom finding me and like chewing me out, and then like it it was like it felt like fucking three hours, and then I came to, and I'm like I'm like. Where's, where's my mom? Where's my mom? And everybody around me is like, ah, 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 ah. and I was like, how long was I out? And they're like, dude, like three seconds. I'm like, wow, that was rad. <laughs> so the word for that is definitely robbing. Um, and okay. also yeah. uh, super dangerous. Um, I did do that a few times when younger and then learned how yeah. dangerous it was. And it's like, oh, yeah, the whole depriving the brain of oxygen is like mm, the key word. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody that's listening to this, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> when you get, when you die, tell them Adam sent you. <laughs> As a representative no. of Dragon's Creek Gaming, the podcast, I, I have to say that I do not support Adam in his decision to advocate for this. <laughs> As a representative of, uh, <laughs> give it a shot. It's a black or or just do drugs. Do drugs. Do drugs. Do drugs. Do crime. I'd rather do you drugs do drugs than choke yourself in a bathroom. I'll say that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so you get that information. Um, and, and again, those words, um, no good deed goes unpunished. It's All right. So I come to you and you ever heard, you know, like I'm, I'm like laying on the ground and, and like, you know, it takes a moment for me to like regain where I am. And I, I get up and I look around like immediately, you know, my guy's like, <laughs> don't jump me. Don't jump me. Don't, don't. Oh. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh... All right, note to self. Don't ask Torval for a crowbar. Um... Just get the hell out of here. Okay, so we got a, a few minutes left here before the end of the session. Um, you got... We're kind of right now in what's called free play, which means that you guys can talk to anyone you want, do anything you want, talk to each other. Um, is there anything that anyone would like to say or do um, before everything kind of kicks off? Um, we'll say uh, um, that as the days pass um, there's more activity in the prison and you start to see like six or seven of these like they're men or women you can't even tell but they're dressed in like full suits of armor covered in cloaks wearing animal masks uh, made out of metal oh, weird um, they carry around, like, one of them has, like, a giant scythe, like, like one of those death scythes, um, but it glows, like, green. Um, <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, yeah, and you would recognize that these are probably the spirit wardens that you've been 
weird like oh, they're... like told about they're okay. they're actively like like they'll come into um the yard or they'll come into like the dining room and they'll just like take someone oh okay <laughs> like a live person yeah they just take them like they just grab them and drag them out of the room they don't say a word you've never heard them speak holy shit um, so they, they, they're a presence in the prison these days, these these next three days. Oh. And this is unusual. Um, they're never they're never there. Yes. Yeah. Like they've never been in the prison before. So just just curious, because I'm guessing my dude's probably been in here for a, a little while, at least. Uh, been there when for someone at least dies, two weeks. at least two weeks, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, if someone dies in the prison, do they come in normally? Um. No, the guards will take them no. out. So them we'll being here is out. like it's completely, completely unprecedented. And they're yes. taking alive people. They're taking yeah. alive people. Yeah, and like um, right, we gotta, we gotta get the hell out of here. This might be what he's talking about. This gotta be, this gotta be. We gotta get the hell out of here. Something bad's gonna happen. Something real fucking bad's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here for it. Madam. I know a collection of a sample size when I see one. They're doing something. And I don't like the ticking clock. Three days, it's, it sounds like something's bigger is going to happen. We got to yeah. yeah. figure out by then. Um, no. You guys ever notice you can um, move these bars? I'm just going to grab one and start twisting it in place. <laughs> he thinks you can probably yank this fucker right out of here. I don't know. I can't. I'm not very strong. Um, I'm going to give you one other piece of information um, for free. Um, the second day after um, you received Tarval's warning, um, on the yard, you see like a beast of a man. Like he, he's one of those like UFC fighters that looks like he should be overweight, but he's just clearly like a shit brick house. Okay, um, okay, so like, uh, like, yeah. Like Chuck Liddell with a gut. Um, uh, Chuck Liddell. Know. Yeah. Um, and so he's like, you know, he's like six foot eight and he's like 350 pounds. Um, that guy gets into a fist fight with a guard. Um, you don't know who this guy is necessarily other than that people call him bear. Um, but he gets into a fist fight with one guard and, um, he gets then beaten up by like seven other guards with like cudgels. Um, so you do see that, um, and you know that he's probably taken into solitary confinement, which is on the third floor. Okay. Um, but he would be by far the strongest person. Okay, okay, okay. Freed him. He'd be... He'd help us. Us. Oh, yeah. Don't have muscle. <laughs> we yeah. don't have a lot of muscle, the three of us. Um, I think we're... We're more thinkers than than doers, so maybe getting <laughs> someone with a bit of brawn is where we're kind of going with this. Um, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, I like that. I like that idea. I don't know. You, I, you guys see that guy? You see that guy? He got uh, dragged away. The the big guy. He fought all those guards and they locked him up. Did you guys see that? Out of the yard. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hear me out. All right. I think maybe. Uh, <laughs> I got an idea. I get him out. We get him out. We get him out. And then he gets us out. Strong guy. Tear out some bars. We get out through the windows. I'm a little guy. I don't know about you. I mean, you guys look pretty little. You, you got some bars out of the windows. We get the hell out of here. We get him out of there. Maybe uh, find that guy to hit him. Hit him in the head. The guy to hit him in the head. Get that guy in position so he can... Something. I don't know. I don't know. But something. I like it. I like it. I, th I, I think it's a good plan. Yeah. I, I, th I think the biggest thing we need is the door. We need the door out until we know how we can actually, like, you know, where we can make that. Like, is it is it anywhere? Or, like, you know, is, like, you know, do... Does there, like... Oh, I'm like... Does it so, need to be a weakened bar? Or if we got this dude, can we, like, can we pick any? Can we pick any? Like, do you think he's strong enough to, like punch out the whole bars did, did oh, you he want to know he... if there's like a particular what set of windows that's weakest so there's that or there's also what i noticed with the how the people were getting their drugs in if they weren't around at the time 
or busting out, then we could try to that. That's that's two potential. I like it. I like it. I like it. That's a weak point. That's a weak point. You know, they got stuff coming in, going out. It's got to be going out if it's coming in. I mean, better, <laughs> better out than in, you know? So if we, uh, something that and uh, the big guy, guards, weapons, hooks. I don't know. Give me, give me, give me one week to think about it. Yes. We don't have come up with something. <laughs> did you forget the, did you forget, um, I think Your you're the one who told us three days. <laughs> yeah, the characters don't. I do. <laughs> I got a week to make my guy smarter than me. <laughs> also, yeah, and just real quick, um, you guys um, will decide an approach, and then that approach will be possible. Like, that's kind of how this game works. It's one of those okay, things cool. where, like, I gave you a few hooks that you can bite into, so take the week and, and think about which way you'd like to go, and we will we'll pick up uh, with the escape from Iron Hook Prison in one week's time. Um, Fuck yeah. For us, that's it for tonight, guys. But um, listeners, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. And... Um, and commenting and rating uh, five stars because you definitely loved it that much. Um, <laughs> and we will look forward to next week um, when we begin our first score. Um, Nighty night. That's it. The end. The end. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, guys. We won. <laughs>